Oh, that's literally what we opened the show with. The second I clicked unmute, that's what we got to <laughs> We are, we're on for live. We were. Yeah. This, it was basically right around the time Renee asked how juicy your dad right. was. <laughs> Everybody in the chat, please tell us how juicy is your dad. How juicy is your dad? Um, this, will be to win, this will be to win dice, by the way. So can everyone... Can juiciest dad wins. Can everyone roll a d20 real quick so we know whose dad is Just the juiciest? Dad. <laughs> Who's dad? Who has the ju juiciest dad? Every D&D &D game has a endowment check. I want to do a juicy dad check. <laughs> I mean, I'm winning. <laughs> We've got a... Uh... Tear coming out of my eyeballs. Right Carlos and my dad are on about equal level, oh, basically. My, <laughs> mine makes sense. Mine makes sense. My dad passed away. Like, so oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Carlos. It's not on equal leveling, then. <laughs> it's not a fair contest anymore. Uh, My dad looks like a crazy wizard, so. Oh. That's cool. I feel like oh, I get God. to be involved in this. Mm. There you are. Oh, Whoa. Well, we are live. Uh, hello, everybody. Okay. <laughs> uh, on that chaos. Hello. <laughs> this episode is sponsored Hi. by, I think, Jesus, Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Red and Bull. Red, Red Bull. Bull. Yeah, Red Bull. Mm -hmm. And every um, juicy dad out there. And every, and every all the juicy, dad. juicy, juicy dad. We I'm believe nice. at World Weavers that every dad is juicy every... in their own way. World Weavers is a and part uh... of the Homebrew Network. If you're enjoying the show, uh, there's something wrong with you. You can hop on actualplaypods.com and you can uh, get links to our Discord. We have a really fun Discord, a very active community. Uh, a lot of fun people in there. Um, check that out again. It's at actualplaypods. Dot com. You can find a link to that. Uh, last week, we concluded our last origin, which was Kale She, what was uh, turned out to be Liara's origin, played by Renee. Renee, thank you for your uh, excellent idea for the uh, first origin. Renee, you have a little bit of a, a Twitch stream going on. Do you want to tell us I about do. that? I do. I'm sorry. I'm still emotionally recovering from Juicy Dads. <laughs> um <laughs> I do. Uh, I have take. I have taken a little bit of a of a hiatus between just like the hectic of the holiday. I work in a restaurant, so holidays are always super busy. But mm -hmm. I'm picking it back up tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No, wow. I lied. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, you can catch me at twitch.tv backslash the Caked Crusader, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is in my little like thingy that pops up in the corner of the artwork with the things and the stuff. Well, I'm having um, so much trouble pointing right now. There we go. Um, <laughs> I am currently playing through The Devil in Me, which is a mm. horror game based on H.H. H. Holmes, who is quote-unquote America's first serial killer, and is developed by the same company that did uh, Until Dawn and The Quarry, which I have also played on my channel. So come hang out, get some spooks, we'll make some jokes. Get some It'll be spooks. Great. Check out get the... Some Caked Crusader on Twitch tomorrow, 2 p.m. You heard it, heard it here first. And you can always just jump on our Discord and get links that way. Uh, if you are enjoying the show, I'd like you to take a trip south on the screen to a little place I like to call the subscribe button. Uh, it's mirrored. That's why I'm having trouble. It's this way. The subscribe button. Uh, hit the button and subscribe to the show. And then you'll never miss an episode of World Weavers, which I think is pretty neat um we are hey, yo, actually like subscribe and ring that bell yeah 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 meow, meow, meow. Um, Nash, that, that like, bell. What? <laughs> uh we're also actually sponsored by fan roll dice uh and that is fanrolldice.com you can use the code homebrew for 10 percent off anything in the store literally anything and literally. spoiler alert You'll be able to get Homebrew Network Dice in about four weeks. Those are fully in production now. They've got the Homebrew Network logo on the D6 and on the D20. Um, I got a... We've got a bag and a dice tray, all sorts of cool stuff. We're going to be one of their custom <gasps> products. along with nice. Alongside some really awesome other shows, too. There's some Glass Cannon stuff going up there. There's some NADPOD stuff going up there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Ooh. Check that out. FanRollDice.com. Code HOMEBREW. 10% off anything. Uh, okay, so today, the name of the show is World Weavers, so we do have a little bit of world weaving to do. So let's do some housekeeping first. Uh, Emily, Yay. yeah, I am awarding you three influence points. I need everyone to find a way to track their influence that's not like a specific character sheet. 
and then you can put it in your character sheet later, but we're going to be carrying over as we go. Uh, three points to Emily because she did cool makeup every single episode of the... Um, three points to yeah. Emily! The Kale She origin. Uh, Carlos, I said I awarded you a point at one point, and I wrote that down. I don't remember why. I'm assuming you did something cool. Is that because... It was the line. Down? No, I was looking for damage. inspiration. For mm. Cool stuff. and That's fine. Well, you, you no, you had a super cool moment in the last I episode. Think I used Zephyr Strike. I used Zephyr yeah. Strike to yeah, that was it. That was yeah. it. Yeah, get dashed um, and advantage, basically. So everyone else, uh, go ahead and roll a one d six and take one additional point. Everyone, just to start you off, just a little present from me <gasps> to get nice. you. Nice. Do I also started. roll? Yeah, Is it we? the yeah. three in additional? Everybody, you get Ooh, you yeah. get three additional. Carlos gets three additional. Everyone gets one additional. So that makes Carlos start at two, Emily start at four, and then roll a d6. And oh. then let everyone know what you got in case anyone wants to keep track of influence. I got five. I got a five. I got a four. I, I got three. I rolled a three, but if we're doing plus one, that would bring it up to four. Is how math works. Yeah. Oh, we have plus one. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all Everyone gets though. a plus one. So I am at a total six. Yeah. I am at a total of seven. seven. Hell yeah. Um, so a little bit of a reminder on how the weaving r rules. <laughs> wow. Weaving rules weaving, is going weaving, to go. Weaving rules. Weaving rules. It is really. Weaving. A real thing for me. I apologize. I don't know why we named this show World <laughs> Weavers. It was <laughs> hindsight, not the best word for the way my mouth is shaped. Um, what was I? The rules for world weaving. Uh, we're going to yeah. go in initiative. And as we're going through initiative, if you want to stop something or change something, you can put up an a, uh, influence point to ch interject, basically, to change what they're saying or to stop something that they're saying. Um, it can be a yes, but that's okay. You still have to spend an influence point. Or it can be a no, fuck you. That's also fine. But you have to spend an influence <laughs> point. The person... It can also be a yes, but... It can also yes, be a yes, but... Yes, but... Uh, it can be all sorts of buts. Um, all buts are welcome at World Weavers. Mm -hmm. All the buts. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> Uh, the person whose turn it is can disagree, at which point we begin a bidding war of influence. So at that point, other people can join in and also bid influence on what they would like things to, um, what they would like to happen. So basically take sides, how much, and then how we'll tally up the total influence and whoever wins spends the influence. If you lose, you do not spend your influence. You only spend, oh. only expend your influence if you win. Okay. Now, if you say, I'm going to spend an influence point and say, yes, but the beans also grow on trees, right? And the person's mm. like, yeah, I like that. You still have to spend the influence point, but there's no like bidding thing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there is a tie, I had I didn't think about that until right so, now live. DM song rules. <laughs> song battle. Maybe we can just roll yeah. off. The yeah. chat decides. Paper, rock, rollies. If I was going to say rollies. Yeah. Rollies. The chat. Broadway gets a musical point. trivia. Oh. If there is a tie, oh. I will roll on the dice camera. Mm. Um, I'll roll. We'll do a dice cam roll. I think that sounds like fun. If there's a tie. odds and evens. Yeah. Odds, odds and evens. evens. Yeah. Uh, skins. Versus yeah, we could also do that. Juicy um, dads versus <laughs> this very uh, <laughs> sensual in. episode yeah. that we've created so I far. Feel... With juicy dads. I this was going to be like a picnic versus... kind of thing. Brought to you by <laughs> Jesus and Taco Bell. I I blame Emily. She like started the pre-show like prep with asking someone about their like butt size okay, or something. I don't remember what it no, was. It I asked someone how well endowed their character was. It's mm. fine. This is normal D&D &D conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Can I roll a titties check? <laughs> <laughs> everyone, in, uh, everyone in chat, I suppose you just kind of need to close your eyes and hear the words how well endowed are they and decide what that means for you, right? Yes, like, yes. Is it how much money do they have? Is it... It could be all sorts of things. Um, you know what? 
it's not just juicy dads it's juicy moms it's mm -hmm. juicy parents yeah. just mm -hmm. juicy yeah. parents caretakers you're juicy. you can be juicy Guardians. too see you juicy you Guardians. can be juicy too if you but just believe, you can be juicy. <laughs> believe in your juiciness. Can that just be our first shirt? Is just that everyone is juicy. Everyone is juicy. We are. It's all. like the everybody poops book. Everyone yes. is juicy. Everyone, everyone is juicy. juicy. Every sure. In their own way. And then yes. the bean hat, can be right? Apple. The bean beanie. Yeah. 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 The yeah. social. The uh, bean bean. Yeah. Social yeah, um, bean accessory. Yeah. Hat. Yeah. <laughs> I do want a social accessory hat real bad. How yes. much time do you need, Grant? <laughs> <laughs> You can keep going. <laughs> um, deep rabbit hole. It was if great you like until you pointed merch, it out. Thank you. Oh, oh um, sorry. Jesus. If you like this merch, join us on our Discord where you can have a say, maybe. <laughs> you can put in an input in writing. We've got, <laughs> yeah. a, yeah. we've got a little bit of a latency issue going on right now. So oh. let me see. Oh, okay, yeah. That's why I just messaged you. Um, Interwebs, why? Back nab it, internet. Uh, you know what? This is just Elon Musk mad about juicy inclusivity. Uh, <laughs> well, does Elon Musk run the internet let now? Me see here. Sure. Probably. Sure. <laughs> 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 Difficulty screen. That's so cute. I love that. I want to see. It's to you too. Okay. okay. So we're doing uh. Well, we're live now, so quit spoiling things. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I should have given you a warning. I, I'm new to this type of thing. Okay. I think that that is fixed. I um also, had an extra zero at the end of our streaming bit rate. Uh, uh, and so it defaulted to the highest possible streaming bit rate, and I have a great rig, but I think that's for like, like NASA type shit. So yeah. we're set. We're set back to where we should be. Um, awesome. I think that that is. Well, the pause music is still playing. Hold on. I was just vibing, man. I was gonna say, I kind of love it. Carlos, I feel like, like you'd have a good jazz voice. Can you give me like a? Hello, everyone, and welcome to you live. Hey, everyone, this is Carlos K. Daw. Welcome to World Weavers Live. It does All feel very cool late night radio. Right? Talk show Sit host. back, relax yeah. as the old K. Dog brings you round down to Smooth Town. Uh, yeah. man, I'm very sorry, oh but God. chat is clamoring for Taco Bell to be canon. Everybody is, mm -hmm. I'm getting shouted at by multiple things. One, somebody's telling me, it's my wife, telling me <laughs> that we weren't muted. So I oh. just want everything you can't. It won't hold up in court, so you can't take it because that's it won't work. We I, were thought we were muted. So I think you were way. muted. I don't know if I agree with your wife. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Danny's about to lie. This is so awkward <laughs> for everyone involved. I I don't know. I'll uh, still a little low. Okay. Um. We're okay. So. We talked about the weaving rules. Rules. <laughs> we well, talked about okay. Uh, minus one influence for Renee, and we talked about. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, and we talked about that. Um, so I have some questions for you all. Uh, yes, Liara. Ready. So the current timeline, as we have it set from the session zero, is um it's about i have 1498 atu is what i'm saying so this is going to be after the undoing which was the period of darkness on kiamia um how many years have passed since the events of kale she since you ran from sarp oh god i think it's maybe been two it's not been long not been at long all. at all so, especially for an elf yeah for an elf that's like, like it's like it happened yesterday okay like she is still Fresh off the trauma boat. <laughs> um, are you saying from boat. that time to when the eventual campaign is, or to now? To the campaign. We're not quite yeah. to okay. the. We're not quite to our next yeah. bit mm -hmm. yet. Um, I was gonna say because yeah yeah okay okay cool. So two that's years. actually that's actually a lot sooner than I was expecting. Um, yeah no she's 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 coming right off right off of that. Mm, fresh like the corpses of her friends 
Mm. I would like to. That was just funny. like the memories. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow. I would like to establish. They're not even told yet, Grant. <laughs> um, I'd like to establish like a calendar. So the idea I had, um, if you will remember that we are working with um, a, a two moons. So I have been calling them the mother and the child in my head. I don't, Carlos, this is technically your creation. Is that an okay terminology? Perfect. Perfect. So I'm a moon. I believe way. Carlos, yeah, suggested the two lovers. I at one point suggested the two, the child that and the was mother, the but I and think it moon. could be regional. The, the sun and the yeah. moon. Yes. Yeah. Sun the and the lovers. moon were lovers. Yeah. And then the second moon is the child. Moon, the moon. Secondary yeah. moon, which is like the child. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um so there's a whole space family up there. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say yeah. cosmic polycule, Precious. but like <laughs> the comet Precious. that comes around, that's like the cat. Yeah, <laughs> it weird. That would make sense. Around. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of comes by whenever it wants. So the way the way that I was picturing this, and I had a little MS Paint drawing that I was probably not good to show people, but we've got our sun, and then we have a moon that is rotating around it. I imagined at somewhat the same pace as our moon, so it has a thirty day cycle. That is going to be the child, and then we have the mother. Um, which is one of the lovers. So the sun and the moon are the lovers, right? And we've got mm -hmm. the we've got the mother, which is going to be on a sixty day cycle. So knowing that we're on a sixty day cycle, I wanted to come up with ten months, so to speak, but or not ten, six months or periods based mm -hmm. on where the child was when the mother was a full moon. Does that make sense? Yes. Are you yes, picturing yes. this mm -hmm. the way that I have it in my head? So, um, yes. what How I'd like to do... How would this go around a bean, though? How would it go around a bean I'm is just, a great I'm just question. Kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't answer that question. Don't even think about it. It works as magic. Can someone tweet <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson yeah. and ask, ask him, him how things if the world a bean. was a bean, yeah. how would it work? Um, I know we're joking, Els, but I'm Els doing Bells that right now. The Els, I approve of Els Bell's message, which says, I vote the baby is called Little Goose Jr. That is. And so I also think that Little Goose Jr. is. I, mean, I don't know how many influence points I have to spend to not have that happen. But we throw it out. out. Sure, you're I will fight it till the end. <laughs> let's, no, roll, no. let's roll initiative, uh, everybody, okay. so that we can um, get into some weaving here. So just roll a d20 for this. 20.14 oh. Is there a way to automatically do it onto the onto the hmm. turn order? Um, I don't. Or do you have to add it? I don't think there is. We don't have no. tokens selected. I don't think. Yeah. Do no, not yet. So let's do another eighteen. Holy hi, my goodness, people. Okay. Okay. Andy. What is with all the like two point um. one twenty point one four? I don't know. It happened happen? in the last one, last two. And I did like all of the my initiative is two point one four. Well, this and is just a D twenty for, yeah, for this weaving. Is just a straight D20 for oh, weaving. okay. Well you said initiative. It's for weaving though. A weaving initiative. Okay, well I roll a twelve then. Okay, then uh, mine is sixteen. Because I had plus two. I rolled a four. Okay. So we've got Carlos at four. Emily at 15. I'm at 18. Uh, Maxton, yeah. Andy at 18. Maxton at 16. And Renee at 12. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so that brings us to Andy first. So what I want to visualize is what is going to be the first. It doesn't have to be the first, I guess, if you want to go off of our schema here. But what is the first, or what is what is one of the two month periods in our time? So one of this, we're going to have six sixty day periods that we're going to have as like the calendar for the world of Kayamia. So what is the first one, and what is your constellation, and what is the myth behind this constellation? So my constellation in the two month period is called Torga, T A U R G A. Um, and the constellation of that is, um, it kind of looks like a large whale or some kind of large Aww. sea creature, shark, mm. something like that. It's different mm. between cultures, some very large fish. Um, 
And the uh, lore behind this is that swimming around in the very large ocean water on this bean is this large creature that um, supposedly has been there since pre the undoing. And when the undoing happened, something struck what was once a normal fish creature and has now turned it into this large protector of the ocean. So it's this large, some see it as a monstrosity, some see it as a protector, some it's different. Um, but it's this very, very large, terrifying something. Nobody's really quite sure. I see it as like a penguin mixed with a whale mixed with like a bear. So hmm. how juicy is it? It is <laughs> very juicy. Oh, it was my it only so one. Juicy. That was just my <laughs> only. Got all the, it's it's there now. Well, don't don't the say that. We are fish. so early in, in the game. <laughs> don't say that yet. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. So our first kind of mythical. So this is a mythical creature too. This we got is, like a twofer. Yeah. We have a myth. We have a mythical creature said to live in the sea. Is the name of the creature the, the Torga? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So um, the child is nearest Torga during the kind of the turn of the year, that first month. Um, La Torga. Torga. That brings us to uh, Maxton. What is your myth? Um, so my myth uh, is called, um, or I should say my constellation is known as Mount Calvia. And it's called that because the star formation generally forms sort of a hill formation at the bottom with a, a the sort of a bl or a, the the hilt of a blade sticking out of the top, as if somebody perhaps planted a sword into a small rise yeah. or a small hill. Um, and that constellation um, is seen as a, a sort of an omen of peace. In a lot of cultures, it represents kind of the end of war or the end of strife. Mm. So it's not always very visible. Um, it's probably like a, a much further constellation if you're talking about the distance of space. So it's not as bright, I should say. It's just not as bright as others. But mm -hmm. um, when it is very clear during times of this greater seasonal year or something, it's it's generally seen as an omen of of peace and prosperity. Is there, uh, is it kind of a time of like peace and? It's generally just. Like it, it's generally if you just go by the kind of like the the common folk mythos of it, it just generally uh, is seen like I said as a good omen. It's seen as a time of like, oh, you will be entering a, a peaceful time. Oh, okay, um, and Got this it. This yeah, and and this mountain does exist. Um, shoot, I don't have my world map up. We might have to w weave in where this Mount Calvia actually is, but it mm. is actually a location, um, and that is then represented also by a constellation. Excellent. That brings us to uh, Emily. Tis me. My constellation is a bit of a two-part. <clears throat> it's called the Hare and the Huntress. And the lore on it is that as the gods were creating the worlds, there was a lesser god, uh, or a lesser goddess, who was given a task of like, okay, you can be a part of this creation if you are able to catch this elusive hare. And the hare was mm. not another god, but another of those, like, mythical beings. And so she has continued her attempt. She has yet to be successful in catching this elusive hare, and so they kind of mirror each other in the sky, where they're always chasing each other. And the Huntress, when it's at its peak in time, is the mark of hunting season on Kyamia. So it is kind of the, in our world, what would be the start of hunting season. She when is, is kind that? Of the indication. Is that a summer thing? I... When do people hunt? Yeah, I think Depends it's on what you're hunting. 
Yeah, yeah. Dep- yeah, definitely depends on what you're hunting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that. <laughs> please two chime in. Have I have a chat. <laughs> please chime in. I have never been hunting in my life, so yeah. I think the I always thought it was like late summer. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Summer, it's usually it depends on what you're trying to hunt. Um, there are some seasons mm-hmm. that I think are like mid to late summer, and then some of them are like late to. I, late summer I'm also to like autumn. Not a hunter, but I think generally you try to hunt opposite of the breeding season yeah correct. because you want to hunt you do not want to be hunting during a time when you risk killing pregnant females of a species yeah, exactly. or mm-hmm. disrupting the breeding cycle so we'll say since it's if we're marking it as like if i am bringing in the third month the huntress appears on that third month which is kind of leaning into the that'd be like half of the year? that'd be like may june right now so what if we moved that into like july august Great. <clears throat> She's the mark of like harvest and hunting season. So then we'll go back in time a little bit um, to Renee's myth. And that's going to be like the May, June until like the beginning of summer area, unless you'd like a different time. That sounds good. What is your myth, Renee? So my and constellation. It's so <laughs> Josie. Um, my constellation is called the Harmony. Um, it appears as a um, different uh, areas interpreted as different things, but it's essentially like in the sky. It looks like a harp or a lyre of or some form of stringed instrument. Um, and so the mythos that goes along with it is that up until um, the I am so sorry. I've had the worst brain block, and I've been trying to find it in the notes. The event. The undoing. undoing. The undoing. Okay. So (laughs) up until the undoing, Mm -hmm. like, the celestial bodies and our world as it existed were in relative harmony. And then following the undoing, things have been slightly out of tune. Um, So the myth that goes along with the harmony is that whenever the harmony is present in the sky, things tend to be a little bit discordant um, and will continue to be Mm -hmm. so until they are rectified on some form of spiritual scale. Mm. Wonderful. So like traditionally during the time that the harmony is visible in the sky, historically that is when the majority of things like conflicts break out. Um, People tend to avoid doing anything that would be like intensely interpersonal during this time, just because it is a time of such, uh, animosity and, mm-hmm. and kind of out of syncness, if that makes sense. Got it. Perfect. Did you sorry, honey, Mercury? I can't go to your mother's this weekend. <laughs> Did you just it's make harmony. harmony. I'm retrograde. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially harmonies in retrograde. I, oh. I'm not responsible for what I've done right now. <laughs> <laughs> Blame everything on I harmony and retrograde. That's fine. I love it. Yes. Uh, Maggie, you are up for the September, October in our time, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Time. So you talk about juicy. This mm. one, this one's juicy. Oh. So, I like to call her the jilted lover. And Ooh. the way the stars align just such, she looks like some say it looks like she just has maybe her hand to her head or that she's crying or something, but there's definitely a shape of like a woman, you know, inconsolable. And the mythos behind her is that she was the goddess who fell in love with the mini moon or the sun moon's god, but he refused to break away from the larger moon to stay with her. And so there's like certain markers that they have been noted where like this constellation often burns the brightest whenever she's closest to the smaller moon. So like there's like a maybe I don't know if that would be like appropriate, like maybe there's like, you know, love festivals like a Valentine's Day or something like that around that time as well. Mm. But in conjunction with that, at the times of the year where the two moons and the sun happen to be really closer together and she's further from them. There's always these reports of either like massive king tides in some areas or like crazy rainy seasons. And it's the belief that all of this excess water and rain is because she is just like weeping because she's far away from her love who's chosen to be with his, you know, his family 
He's planetary in my family. Oh, yeah, she's like I, a death cab for cutie song. I love a little her. bit. I would a like to <laughs> use influence points. Okay, and I would like you possibly maybe to redirect from the moons. Okay, if at all possible. Is any like particular reason, or is it secret? It's it's important for later purposes in this game. Okay. Maybe Whoa. I'm wondering. So what's your alternative then? Yeah, Robert? you're gonna have to yeah. you're you have gonna to, have to pick. You have to give us something else to vote on. Um could be the sun, could be another star, potentially a larger star. I wouldn't be Is opposed she the to the sun. She's a jilted level of the sun. The I wouldn't sun be opposed stayed to with the, the sun. Moon. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I dig that because it would still yeah. work with the the planetary movement versus where the actual yeah. constellation. The sun's is a bit of a tramp, is what you're saying. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> she's juicy. I'd be cool with Not that. Not my words, <laughs> but <it's> sure. <laughs> juicy. So Carlos um, hates the sun. <laughs> it's not true. That's his opinions about the sun. We'll just say that. What he's sending is influence points at. <laughs> Hating okay, no, I can I, I can get down on that point unless someone else. Wants to... No, no, I'm I'm cool with yeah. that. Sounds like Everybody Maggie is cool agree agreeable. So Carlos, yeah. spend spend Hearts. your one point. Don't don't do that, or I'm gonna start sowing chaos. This is not <laughs> supposed to. Oh. Wait, we can't. No, you can't be you nice to each other. You said that at the same time that he <laughs> did a nice heart symbol. <laughs> That's what I. That's what I meant. You can't do the heart thing because you're supposed to conflict. Okay. You can't be nice to each other. Urr. Urr. Um, <laughs> How dare you? So the Urr. goddess. Uh, so the jilted lover is a symbol of a goddess who was in love with the sun, mm -hmm. the god of the sun. Now. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And um, when the sun is closest to the moons, right. That's that is when, when big the season seasons mm -hmm. and all the tides and everything. And when the jilted lover is closer to the sun, it burns really, really bright. Mm. Got it. Does that work, Carlos, with your expenditure? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Cool. All right. We are yeah. modified. I love it. That is great. Uh,. And that brings us to Carlos, your constellation, mm. your myth. Well, question. We don't want like two love constellations in the air, do we? Why not? Yeah. Well, well, I had one that was very much similar to this idea of love. I had one called Isabel's Tear. And that is the story of many moons no pun intended ago <laughs> uh there were two lovers whose name was isabella and rose and they were deeply in love and there was some force some evil spirit that stripped uh rose away from isabella and isabella prayed to the moon for something some sort of sign that showed that uh she was well and that there was a possibility to be together and that is when the stars aligned into what seems to be uh, a single tear that kind of formed in the sky maybe not so much a few many tears uh and from that point on it was called isabella's tear so was hers a hopeful story or a sad story hey a little bit of both like yeah. just like any good song like just you know full hope and sadness so yeah. uh, i've been playing a lot of dong and rompa lately and you cannot have despair without hope so yeah Back. if so that doesn't like work the I whole end more. of our season just love and sadness like yeah. is that what i mean if you <laughs> we're going to bring it back around February well, is just really lots of sadness and, and love there. We just That's set okay. up cuffing season on Kayamia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, let's... <laughs> I'm gone. I'm out of the <laughs> Fill me in later on what the fuck cuffing season means. <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, we'll tell okay. you when you're older. Depends so... on what you're cuffing. <laughs> Alright. I love trying to get context for... The, this happens to me in our other show all the time. Um, I can't say the one that they were messing with me on because that's a much <laughs> more mature show. But 
never mind. This is a pointless story if I can't tell you the punchline. Um, now I'm just in a panic that I don't understand the meaning of cuffing seasons. So we're we're going to find good. out together. Okay. <laughs> so we have our we have our um our cycle of the uh, sixty day cycle, and we're going with uh, Torga, Mount Calvia, the Harmony, the Huntress and the Hare, the Jilted Lover, and Isabella's Tear is going to be kind of our big seasons right now. Um, yeah. And they will each have sixty days, and we're going to do a nice. 360 day year no leap years unless someone wants to spend an influence point for leap years i would um, like to spend an influence point for a leap year <laughs> that's all so the marbles too. Uh, i spend one as well and the leap years ha- happen randomly <laughs> <laughs> i that agree with this one terrible. except like instead it. of an extra day there's two and a half less days <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> randomly assigned year <laughs> I'm not doing that seriously. I'm saving influence points for, for some shit. Um, Spend an influence point on this. No, I, yeah, yeah no. perfection. <laughs> no. Okay, uh, Carlos, I'm going to need you to start getting ready to share a map um, because we're going to be putting SARP on the map. So I want to do that. While Carlos is preparing for that, um, in the last two years, can my survivors give me a very brief? Uh, what the fuck you are up to? Um, if you haven't seen the first origin and want to, you might want to tap out yeah, for a second. Spoilers. I mean, it's spoilers of the show you're watching. Not much I, I can mean, do about that. Some people died. Um, what? in like totally natural ways, though, that we were all expecting, and we coped with mm-hmm. very well. Of old age, oh, yeah. surrounded by old friends age, and family, peacefully uh, at home. <laughs> So that's going to bring us to, um, so it's been two years, not very much time. What does uh, Fairland get up to, Andy? Uh, Fairland definitely just straight up retired. Like, she mm-hmm. was done. She was out. Um, she moved to a nice place with lots of land. Um, and she's starting her own little, like, bee farm. She's raising bees. She is making honey. Aww. She is not talking mm-hmm. to anybody, but maybe Liara on occasion. Um, yeah. But for the most part, just hiding away, away from society. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I love that. Uh, let's see. Dead, dead. Maggie, <laughs> what <does> <laughs> Charlotte, get Salt up to sheet wound. <laughs> On that note, um, so I think he needs to make like the 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 scene in the Emperor's New Groove where he's like eh eh, like looking at his brides, but with you have Grant's, like person. dead dead. I think you have a great <laughs> personality. Oh That's my amazing. god! Yes. Oh my gosh, um, Charlotte, I think she almost would have like. A reverse of Fairland because she'd been in retirement for so long this kind of like it, it got the blood pumping a little bit but she also realized like she's no youngin anymore by any means and so I, I like to think that you know she's still living her relatively quiet life but maybe she's like sort of like adjunct professor for their what was what the guild hmm. that they were part of like she comes Bronto, in occasionally Bronto, yeah. Bronto, thank you and she'll you know she'll teach a little course here or there to some of the younger you know a theory course here or you know maybe something to do with any of her you know druidic licenses um but you know just just once a week some just something to get out of the house you know you're the cool professor that smokes with your student exactly i would 100 percent take a theory class from she teaches like two she teaches like two electives that are only on like exactly exactly and everybody wants to be in that class yes all right, Dorn. Um, I and think book Dorn. Revisions. <laughs> I think <laughs> Dorn is largely the same. Um, I would imagine that probably in this time he has received a promotion. Um, within the bronze holds and is probably taking on a bit more of a I won't say a desk job, but he's probably less in the field than he was before. He's probably doing a lot of revisions to the to the uh the the guy the handbook you know every year you have to buy a new one. Sure. 
Um, <laughs> Scientology. Nobody, nobody questions that he's got, you know, a deal going with the publisher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he makes like one change in a chapter and makes you buy a whole new one. That mm-hmm. here. Um, no. The he's, last uh, twenty pages yeah. are half page ads. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's uh yeah no so he's he's still very much his dour rule abiding self but he's probably got a nice little he's probably got like two fees bag like hung up in some sort of little frame in his in his room in his bedroom That's so sweet i like, ask so cute did dorn ever take the mushrooms or did you hold on to them as keepsakes <laughs> um I think Dorn probably took them one time by himself <laughs> with the doors locked. Like there was like a, a bunch of missions out. So nobody was in the guild hall and he never speaks of that night to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad trip. Oh, things. He just saw Toofy that came back and was like, ah, so you finally took it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine very much it was, no, it wasn't even like a bad trip. He was like having a great time. And I'm sure him and Toofy worked out a lot of yeah. of, of things in, in his mind. <laughs> in that time. Great. And Liara, we'll save your last two years to be kind of revealed as we start playing. Um, okay. Leave some, leave some fun there. Can I at least say, and if I need to spend an inspir or not an inspiration, but an influence point to do this, that's that's totally fine. That Liara is definitely like in and out of the hold uh i think for maybe like the first like six months after Mm -hmm. the fact she's just kind of like catatonic or not catatonic but like very withdrawn Mm. at like bronze hold headquarters and then from there probably has pretty consistent contact with dorn and with charlotte and occasionally goes out and visits fairlyn and like so she's gonna have contact with you guys for sure um got it mm -hmm. okay um, and then I currently world state wise have, and this is going to be kind of up for you to, uh, spend influence to change. I have the Kalen Wood and Sarp pretty much shut down by the RCI. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of rumors that it's getting thicker and thicker in the woods. And there are like, I imagine these like stone golems that kind of patrol outside the woods um mm-hmm. from the RCI and they just have, they have the whole place shut down and not many people really know what happened um like all the stories and rumors you've heard Liara are like <laughs> not close right like it's like so fantastical <laughs> i mean um, not that what happened wasn't fantastical but it's just like and then aliens showed up it's like <laughs> right um okay so let's hop over to the map carlos you ready mm-hmm. um we're gonna let's hop over go. to the map and we're let's going to, go to the map. take a look Today. at um we never put sarp or the kaylin wood on the map we also have to put bud is that this word but which is where your parents lived across the continent. There was a breakout of some type of terrible disease. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the word, though. Am I saying I right? mean, in my your brain, it was butt. lived in butt? Bud? In my brain, it was butt. Butt. Uh, you d- are laughing, but uh, lots of people did die. There was a massive plague <laughs> outbreak there. So Not It's juicy really at all. unfortunate because they were, well, they were super well they known died for in their the grapes. Butt. They died in the butt. It was they were really well known for their grapes that were very that produced really, really fruitful juices. Mm. Extra um, juicy. And other the wines. Juices. Extra juicy. Extra juicy grapes. Uh that's juice. Did the town yeah. recover, Liara? Or tell me more about the town. Is it just kind of like abandoned ghost place now, or did they make it through whatever happened there? I think they probably made it through. Um, but nobody goes there anymore. Like they are, they are like, there's the only people that are really there still are people that had families that had been there, like living there before the plague outbreak who have stayed for like familial, like legacy reasons. Like they just have land ownership there. Uh, for the most part, everybody else has kind of like left as soon as a lot of people got old enough to leave, they left. 
Um, and there's a lot of kind of just like rumors and 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 taboo about going into that that town. So they kind of they they still exist, but it's very self sufficient. There's no real like trade or 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 kind of like economy that relies on outside influence Mm -hmm. it's just very much like a a community of it's almost like a commune at this point like a really large commune um like a really large community of people who are just there and just kind of like make food like grow food and produce things that they need for each other um people don't really go there unless they have to okay so we are into map making mode. We are on incarnate.com, oh, yeah. who has been Woo! great enough to support the show. So check out incarnate.com and uh, make maps like the pros, like us. I guess we're not pros. We're pro. We're pretty pro. Andy we're mountains. so pro. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to. We're going to jump back into initiative here. Uh, we're not actually yet. So first thing we need to do, Renee, is I need to put um, the Kalen Wood on the map. So let's get a full view of our being here. Yeah. Um, and some of these places have been claimed. Um, but we need to find a place. And you guys can kind of feel free to talk through this together. Remily, the Remily Crater. Um, feel free to talk through this, but we need Kalen Wood on the map. We need Keth, which is, um, where Bronze Hold HQ is. We need Sarp, which is the town where the events of Kale She took place. And we need Butth, which is, um, another town that mentioned, was mentioned. So we need three. And it might be, um... Good to kind of establish a little bit of scale here too, how large this mm. continent is. So where do you want to put this stuff? Um, so I think that SARP um would be on the uh continent that's in the northernmost, that's the dark green color. That's the easternmost. Um, or the easternmost. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> I didn't have the uh We're back. clearly it's marked. The beans marked. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm sorry. I was looking at it on my tablet. It was really small. I didn't see it. Um, so the easternmost uh, continent, um, I think Sarp would have been kind of close down to where that kind of little like panhandle chicken leg looking friend is. Like uh, to the north. Yes. <laughs> Max to the left. Sorry, I'm sorry to the left. To the left. To the left. To the left. Side. I had to reorientate myself. Um, oh, yeah. Man. So uh, over to the northernmost side, where that little kind of peninsula comes up. Um, I think that Sarp would have been just a little bit east of that kind of. I um... oh, mean, I wish I could access this map and actually ping exactly where I was thinking. Ticket, 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 ticket. Um. A no, I will bit. say, oh, when when we did when we did create this continent, the only thing that we established was that it was jungly, mm-hmm. but obviously it's really long, so it would make sense that there could be more boreal esque forests to the north and or yeah to the left and to the right. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to point that out in case anybody forgot. Yeah, we also established that closer to the crater was more magical. The farther you got away typically was left Mm -hmm. and then the north was very lacking of resources Mm, and the right was more resources um yeah thank you for that refresher um we need another scroll out do you want to see the rest of the map Renee? yeah let's scroll back out again okay because i mean technically we we never specified that the forest they were in wasn't more like temperate jungle kind of thing but that's okay um i, I mean you could put it wherever you want i was yeah. point, just pointing it out just as that was the only thing that was mentioned about that continent okay. so obviously that leaves room to do whatever so maybe we, we go down towards that new westernmost the orientation of the map is throwing for some reason yes. my brain off so hard it's not for um, some reason top top bottom left right <laughs> I, <laughs> we were like so okay, same, we go, same we land go, mass, but 
Autumn. Yeah, for the same landmass, I think. Um, a little bit closer to where Emily's island in the crater is. Um, we can just tuck it down. There's like the little uh kind of bit that pops out a little bit. Um, that's the most westernmost. I keep wanting to say southernmost. The most westernmost uh point downward. You're talking about the same island, correct? Yeah, yeah, on the same island. Yeah, I think it's right where your okay. mouse is, Carlos. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we're drawing a woods there. And then um we're going to put Sarp in the wood. That's cool. I like that. Put it in the middle mm -hmm. of the ocean. That's fine. <laughs> 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 Could I suggest then too we we add a, a mountain range then on the right side of that forest and then we can have can still maintain a jungle esque a mm -hmm. reasonable assumption of jungle to the mm -hmm. to the right side. Seems plausible. That's a big old mountain. Look at that mountain. Just one big there old mountain. One mountain. Yeah. To rule them all. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that. Them some big boys. <laughs> oh, ocean forest. Speaking <laughs> of how juicy are those mountains? <laughs> the Grand Tetons, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey. um, so you... Sarp is in the middle of those forests? So Sarp is going to be somewhere near the center of the woods. Um, And then... We have Sarp is a town, right? Sarp is a town. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. where we played last. Uh, mm -hmm. The first origin was Sarp. Yeah. Gotcha. Just clarifying that. And then the prompt we have for but was across the continent. Um, yeah. So I think that would be over to the south. No. <laughs> It's so, it's so turned around just, right now. Just say uh, right, left. To the right. Okay, to right. The right. To the rightmost edge of the continent. Um, I but think it also, also makes sense could... that a plague would come in at like a port city, too. Mm -hmm. So You could add like a big tree in the middle where that sarp is. That mm. would help signify. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except the there's the tree. not a big tree there anymore. That's there's... true. Just put text that says big tree. Oh wait, yeah, no, that the tree. Oh yeah, it's gone. Right, right, make mind. a little crater. <laughs> With a little sad Panic face. Crater. So you want butt craters. to be right here, right? But yep. Um. Yes, that okay. looks great. Thank you. Because that how would be far... a good town with the island just adjacent, which we said was a. Pretty... How far yeah. do you think? How far do you imagine that is from Sarp? Out of curiosity. That's quite, uh, I mean, looking at the scale of the map here, that's going to be a long way. Uh, that's like, like yeah, Washington and about. Maine, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that cool with you? Yeah, that's totally fine. Because the idea is that, like, they were gone a lot. So Liara never really, like, they, they still communicated. Like, there was still mail and, like, maybe, like, some some messaging and stuff like that. But they never really got to to see each other because they it. were so far away so it's about three thousand miles i would say and i from... would walk three thousand but... miles so the name of that town uh the port town is but mm -hmm. carlos b-u-d-t-h and then we need keth which is going to be where the bronze hold is located i think that That would be on I think that that's gonna be like on that little peninsula to the furthermost uh left hand side, like on the like little like port city on the opposite side of the continent, or maybe like a little bit in maybe where it starts to kind of like bloom out a little bit and look like the top of a chicken leg. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the third time I've referred to it as a chicken leg, but it does kind of look like a chicken term. leg. So. That's what it's called. It's called the chicken leg. The chicken yeah. leg. The drumstick. 
of so the you're continent. talking farther inland? Yeah, farther inland. A little inland. bit further inland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, part. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Could I suggest it across the water from that other city? That's likely how yeah. towns would go about growing. Yeah. Mm. So, well, down, so sorry, Carlos. Down. Where where it just was? Yeah, just the opposite Let's coast. Go down. So, so mm. down. A little bit further down. Nope. Oh, where you were. <laughs> down. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> not south. Not <laughs> south. Down. down. <laughs> just down. <laughs> None of these newfangled directions. So that's Keth. A E T H. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll move move the um, name of Sarp over the town just so that we're clear that it's not the Kalen Wood. Just put it right over the town. And then we might want to name... It's, uh, uh, uh. Might want to name the Kalen Wood there, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this I'm looks so good, that. though, Carlos. Thank you for doing this. Mm -hmm. It looks amazing. Yeah. Our perf Carlos is the best cartographer That's ever. Not good. That's not there we good. go. Perfect. That's, That's perfect. I'll fix it later, y'all. Hell um, yeah. <laughs> this is the Kalen Spell Wood. The Kalen. Layers. Spell that for me. K-A-L-E-N. And then Wood is actually going to be a W. Yep. O. O. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Too fast, too fast. Go D. back. <laughs> Wait, you sure about that? that was exactly That's right. actually not how I had in mind to spell it. It was going to be W Y O O D. The wired. No, I'm just weird. Kidding. Weird. weird. Um, Helen, why? But not where you think it is. So that would put um, huh? that would put the logging incident. I think we said on the southeast, which yeah, I really like the way that this has turned out because it's kind of like. The furthest away from civilization um mm -hmm. yeah up in those mountains too like it would be more yeah i really like the way I that think this the came farther out you would get the older yeah. the woods would get mm -hmm. wonderful Ooh. and we have a lot of area on this continent to weave also like this is a small <laughs> bit i'm really excited about this i uh this is a lot of fun um carlos Can I request is really smart quick, carlos? and for my own men mental stability can you uh paint that as a lighter green on the left side of that mountain range. Oh, to show that it's more... To show that it's a different yes, type of forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More of a temperate rainforest than a tropical there rainforest. There you go. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. <clears throat> I love it. Yeah. It does Wonderful. have very Pacific Northwest, Northwest vibes. It does. Yeah. Um... So then that brings us to the uh, the Valley of Matt Hunter, the place uh, where we're going to be having the Grand Clan Tournament. So the area between these two mountain ranges is where this valley is. So one thing we need to put in the center of the valley is um, the heart. Maxon, do you want to describe the heart of the Matt Hunter <clears throat> Valley? And let's change um, it to yeah. Matt Hunter also. I'll spell that for you. Um, and yeah, I think also too, it, we, we can, Carlos can clean it up at later if they want to. It, it is described as a valley, but uh, it's imagined more of like a basin. So there's really only one feasible entrance, which would be on the eastern side, the topmost side. Um, otherwise, you're, you're thinking of scaling like Andes level of mountains that circle this this space but <clears throat> at the center of this valley <clears throat> excuse me at the center of this um basin is a large crystalline spire um there is a material that is found only here in this basin that is incredibly incredibly hard so so hard that it is unable to be mined or broken by any known means, magical or otherwise. And these spot these crystalline formations scatter the mountain range that circles this basin. Um they are kind of like <clears throat> milky quartz like formations 
that um, perhaps if you were looking at it from a more scientific perspective, it's possible that something impacted this this location many, 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 many thousands of years ago. And whatever it was kind of splintered and broke apart and scattered itself around this, this impact crater. But at the center of the impact crater is the largest formation. It, it's probably several hundred feet tall. Um, kind of a, like I said, a quartz-like solid mass of this milky white crystal, which is sort of what um, sort of what is believed to be giving this basin the um, the the kind of properties that it has with this rapid evolution, rapidly changing environment. Okay, so uh, I popped the spelling for that into roll 20. If you want to copy paste that. So over. for my perspective and clarification, so it's the spire is essentially like if someone were to take a nail and drive it down, and if that nail were to shatter and keep like the main point, is that kind of what we're thinking? Um, I suppose you could think, yeah, you could definitely think of it like that. Otherwise, you could just imagine like a a meteorite that is formed of this crystal gotcha. struck this point on the planet with such force that the meteorite itself splintered apart, sort of sh like in like a burst of shrapnel, okay. and scattered itself into the mountain range around this this basin. And then one single piece, like the largest piece of it that didn't splinter, is now planted kind of in the ground okay. um, uh, where the impact site was. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. Um, we are going to pop a little town um, that is actually... Uh, the start of our adventure here is going to be right at the entrance to the Matt Hunter Valley or Valry. Um, and that's going to be the biological and ecological society of the Matt Hunter Valley, which I have just been calling B E S M V. Yeah. I'm sorry, Carlos. I would actually love to flip that valley around. So the entrance is on the top side, the easternmost side. Um, with this town and then the uh it is kind of enclosed on the southern uh the southern side as it were yeah yeah oh Wonderful. yeah <laughs> <clears throat> excellent uh and then while carlos is adding the besmv we're going to get back into weaving and we're going to start with Andy. Uh, looking at this continent, I need you to add one uh, city, town, um, landmark, uh, something about this continent uh, that is notable. And I would note, Andy, while you're making this decision, I'm talking long enough for you to think, hopefully, that the, God damn it, the northernmost side of this continent does brush up with Andy Mountains right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not so easy, is it? It's disorienting. It sucks. It uh it's <laughs> the, the it's Valerie fun. is getting me. It doesn't <laughs> suck. It doesn't suck. It's great. I just my Carlos, brain has can a you hard change time. that R to an E so my brain can focus <laughs> on everything else? Nope. It's Which a Valerie one? now. Uh, Valley, Valley is spelled no. E Y. <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> You're going to have to spend an influence point for that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> Just like, I can't um, take it. So, before I do that, um, we did discuss in the last one, and we just didn't get to this, that the whole left side of this continent is actually tundra. So, on the side, left side of the forest mm -hmm. should mostly be snow. Excellent. Um, and then I picture that there is a town um, that is actually 
a small little secluded town that's almost up against the mountains back there. On the, um, I don't know what directions are, west westernmost side? The left. upper or the lower? <laughs> the lower. The lower would be west. West, yeah. Okay. Do you have a name for this town or will that be revealed in time? Uh, that will be revealed in time because I'm not that fast. That is okay. <laughs> uh, FantasyNameGenerator.com is a great tool to keep open for a show like ours. Uh, I will get it wait, to you so, soon. Wait, I'm curious so it's just to, as well. So the, you said it's against the mountains. It looks like the mountains don't quite. I thought the mountains were right there under those clouds. They could Cloud, be. The clouds they reveals. Can. Yeah, the they can clouds. be. I just can wanna... be. We will make it happen. We will make it happen. Just have the technology. Ignore. Ignore the blank spot behind the curtain. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. While Carlos is working on that, Maxton, add one thing to this continent. It can be a landmark, it can be a town, it can be uh anything. Carlos, yeah, so I'm gonna add it all the way south. <clears throat> or all the way down. Sorry. Maxton. I'm uh, gonna add another city. There. Mm -hmm. Um, so just east, oh my god, no, that's not right. Just right. <laughs> yeah, of, yeah. Don't, don't make this out to be my fault, all right? It you was, know, I tried. It's 100% your fault. I tried to tell Carlos to do it vertically when we did this and we did it horizontally. <laughs> Blaming um, Carlos. That's low. right, I'm throwing low, the shade low. now. Oh, low of the low. Low, uh, low. It wasn't Carlos's fault. This was all me. I Boo. take full responsibility. Um, so to the right of uh, Beset, Besest, what? Is, how do you pronounce that? What is that? What? What's uh, the what's the center? Of, what is, it's the B E S M V, the Biological and Ecological Society of Matt Hunter Valley. B E S M what? M V. B E S. B is a so, M, M is in man states. So never mind. Okay. Thank you. I got it. I got it. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> so directly to the right of that and above those mountain ranges on the coast, there's another city. Because the Besmv is just an outpost of surveying, and this is the city in which that outpost is related. Um Matter. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big city. Woo! Let's go. So the city is yeah. around the biological and Eco ecological society of Mount Hunter Valley. It's not a. It's not like around. It's like right there, exactly where it was Carlos to the, to to the bottom down. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Boom. Placed. Done. Okay. Um, this is the city that the college that sponsors the Besmv is located in. Okay. Um, <laughs> and this is a city much like um, it, in much competition to Maggie's magical well, ba wizard baby, wizard <laughs> in the baby well city. The baby well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the baby yeah. well. The baby well. Um, much, Obviously. much like much to their to their rivalry is this very, very heavily magical and um, scientific based civilization. This based con country. Love that. Excellent. Uh, um, do I need to? Oh, I gotta come up with a name for it. Uh, we can. Uh, I I will allow names to be when we uh, come back uh, to it. It's. A uh, cat spray can uh, <laughs> phone. Okay. Cat spray can phone. That's actually not a bad name when you say it together. <laughs> yeah. Cat spray can phone. Cat spray can phone. Cat spray can phone. Cat spray can phone. Cat spray phone. Cat, okay, it's cat spray phone. Cat spray phone. Oh. I love it. Ooh, it's like go. not bad. There you go. Um, <laughs> It's really not bad. Cat spray can is good. That's a good I, game. I do now love the idea that every single fantasy writer, creator, anything has just come up with names of things just like in a panic. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, can controller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, <laughs> we made a panic at things around <laughs> our office. Just like, uh, yeah. oh, You've seen it here. This is how Stephen King did it. <laughs> Emily. We're pulling back the curtain. You're seeing how the sausage is made. Chase. Add something to this continent. And always remember, guys, you Excellent. don't have to listen to me. You can say, hey, actually, fuck you. I'd like to create a <laughs> type of lion that lives here. And it has four tails that are snakes. Like, that's always an that option. Is, you that's know. awesome. <laughs> that, that is friend. so interesting that you bring up animals. Because <laughs> I was 100% going to have, like, in the, just off of the forest on the snowy side mm -hmm. of this area, there is a, an area i don't know what to, it's not exactly a cavern but there is an area where like a certain type of creature is found a predatory creature you can even <clears throat> use a whirlpool if you want they can live underground That's it is cool. a predatory mole rat okay yes yeah. <laughs> like is it big or is it just like a normal size mole rat? <laughs> oh they no, big we're, we're yeah. talking like they dude, wrote it like unusual size Yes, we are talking like somewhere between a polar bear and a wolf Whoa, size. Okay. They big. They're big. They big. They big. <laughs> this and is so, super fun that you're doing this because this ties into the idea that I had a little bit. Oh, getting eaten alive by more giant mole rats? Right. What? Yeah, so my dream. Can, honestly, what's on all of our minds now, Carlos? I would shift it slightly up from where you are. And then a little bit more into the snow. They're like out in the tundra of the snow. Yeah, right there. Where they are snow creatures that live underground that are a mix between a polar bear, a wolf, and a naked mole rat because I said it and have to go with it now. Woo! Okay, wait. So then Just I do have the a idea question. Of like <laughs> yeah. the are long they naked? Front teeth. No, they wear clothes. Yeah. Yeah, they are wear you? sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> My town oh, has some like sweaters to make friends with ugly them. holiday sweaters. Like, I would like I'm very curious. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'd like to use an influence point. Okay. Yeah, you're just throwing them out there, it's, huh? Yeah, I was gonna say. That's good. I just wanna rich. I just wanna move it down. Oh, that's fine. I just want it to be in the tundra. Okay. Mm. I don't I would say you don't even have to necessarily use an influence point. You that's just have for to me. Ask. Oh yeah. you used it. Uh, wasn't what clear. is this creature what called? Erumna. Okay. R U M N is a Nancy A. Rumna. M is okay. M is a Nancy. M is a Nancy. No. N is in M is in Nancy. N as in R U. Wait. Now I'm confused how I spelled it. R U M is in Mary. A. N A. R U M N A. Okay. Spelled it. R -U -M -N -A. Rumna. Okay. A -N -A. R -U -M -N -A. Rumna. It's like a Roomba, Roomba. but Roomna. Uh, uh, did you see a okay two questions did you see a Roomba yes. in your room follow-up question <laughs> no i didn't <laughs> you keep saying naked you keep saying naked mole rat i just need to know <laughs> are they are they naked number one they are are they just skin on the outside like a creepy a bear that's just a, just a very no. bear large no. <laughs> actually i'm gonna say yes but they are very blubberous. I am adding in seals uh, to this um, mix of a creature. There you go. This okay. keeps getting better. That's good. That's good. My follow-up question was going to be, how are they staying warm? And you already yeah. answered it. So perfect. I got you. So it is a combination of a naked mole rat, a wolf, a bear, and a walrus. Artists, you know so what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so excited for the art you. of this. I of think... The uh, room that I yes. Um <coughs> Renee. It's challenge rating. I would like 72. you to add a place or a landmark or some type of naked blubberous creature to so this continent. <laughs> so no juicy naked animals, but <laughs> I did have like literally when we were trying to kind of like everybody was going, I wanna put in a cave system because I think caves are mm -hmm. super, super cool. And it makes mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. to just kind of have this cave system be the one that Emily's Rubna's live in, no matter how cursed we are. We love them. Yeah. Um, yes. So I think yes. that this cavern that they live in is part of a larger cavern system that kind of extends once, once you get down into it, 
throughout underneath like the majority like it's massive like i'm thinking well, like I, the so you see these as all being I, under <clears throat> underground mm. not at, at, you're saying so i i i do want to say it sounds like you're sort of it would be like some sort of dark such like a dark place under the rest of the world do how caves do work yes yes okay cool because i fully support this i fully support having yes. a dark under a space cave? There's a perhaps cave, some sort like of under dark oh hey pause um, everyone everyone pause maxton your suggestive influence spending needs to get a little bit more Ooh. clear. Spend I will influence. spend my influence to extend this cave system okay. out to the entire world. Okay. Woo! Yeah, that the entire good. world? So it's like, my question. That's, Hold yeah, on. It's, it's Does it connect massive. under the water, too? Like, yeah. do these yeah, I'm not gonna, Yes. I'm not going to cheat and say that this is literally just the underdark from the forgotten realms but it is just the underdark from forgotten realms there is a myriad of tunnel systems and civilizations that exist under the earth yes they go under the oceans and at places um of course like those places would be like very um i would say like each continent would have generally isolated tunnel system, cave systems, large expansive systems, but there are certain points where they connect to one another, and obviously mm. those would be then high conflict zones okay. or very dangerous okay. areas. Now, Renee, that is a big influence spend. Do you agree? Because it is your turn. No, I totally love that. I, okay. I super adore that. That's, That's great. Does anyone... Um, I, I like the idea I... of we're living in like a, 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 a condo building. <laughs> on the bean <laughs> on the bean does anyone want to contest maxton on connecting all the continents because that has implications going one i would i would yeah, yeah i would I feel back like that maybe the it's the water part for me like i don't mind it maybe being like every continent has its own tunnel system it's where it starts to go through the like water and can actually connect places all right we've got tripped up We've got to figure this I mean, out. It does then. just get Hold down on. to like closer to the core of the bean, and like, are those places habitable? Probably not, but they exist. I mean, it's it's a discussion of are these like floating land masses where the water goes underneath them at some point, mm -hmm. or are they land right. all the way down right. that they could connect? And then they tunnels. just kind of float around. That's, like little that's rubber duckies. kind of the two debate here. If you're yeah, asking yeah. for my what it was when I said it. It is it is underground there. The ocean's depth is variable. There are points between the continents where the ocean's depth is of a of a of a lesser degree and therefore beneath those ocean floors there are in fact tunnels that can connect different under darkian so maybe regions. not every single continent is connected yeah. but at certain yeah. No. areas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I buy Can I? Yes, I and that. that. Yeah. Let's let's pause here. So, okay. As of that was my influence spent. As of right now, we need to figure this out, and then we can we can build onto mm -hmm. it. So, what I need to happen is I need everyone to in roll twenty, whisper me if you are siding with Maxton or if you are signing with Carlos. I'll get off your screen for a second, Carlos, while we do this. Um, will can I? I clarify? Maybe. Give me one second. Here also, whisper me so I know that we're mortal enemies. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, well, first, ask ask your question, Emily, before we do the big. Well, so I just want to clarify on what Carlos's side is, because Maxton is it extends under all continents. Yes. Okay. Yes. What is... Carlos is, it is only under this particular continent, yeah? Or is Carlos, are you, like, it connects to the nearby continents, but doesn't go farther than that? Yeah, I mean, I, I am for that this continent, this continent of Northern Bean does not connect to the continent of Pinto. <laughs> okay, so just well, this shit, continent. You better write Pinto on there so right singular now. continent. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna veto Pinto. 
I'll spend my <laughs> DM influence on Pinterest. Pinterest. That was okay. not a real thing. I just so, was trying to get the point across. <laughs> the okay, so right right now we're talking about an underground cave system that is only under this continent or an underground cave system that might connect all of the continents together. Um whether every single continent or not is a part of that is uh to be seen, but it does connect many of the large continents here. What we need to do is I need you to whisper me as the dm how much influence you're bidding and it can't be more than you have obviously and whether you are team carlos or team maxton so i'm bidding influence points as well or yes is my okay. at least at least one how do carlos I whisper you yeah slash w the i had to w. google it actually slash w the dm or the watch me mess this up and everyone's gonna know how much i, I who knows? Yeah. I need a number as well. Ah, shit. Yeah. Um, While we're in this pause, make sure to check out our sponsor, Fanroll, at fanrolldice.com. <laughs> 10% are you a off juicy using dad code looking homebrew. for dice. Are you are looking you for juicy, juicy dice? Dad? Then check out the silicone dice. They are squishy and juicy. Hopefully, not actually <laughs> juicy. Though. Or check out our My liquid thing. core dice. Okay. Uh, those are juicy, but you will break juicy. them if you get the juice out of them. And you probably They're don't like want to coconuts. consume said juice. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't think you I did that You don't, okay. you don't want to get to that juice. I did that and it didn't no. work. Slash the other way, space the... Did I do it right? I think I did it right. You need a space in between the W. Oh my gosh, you're so... so <laughs> as Maggie, I... I see what you said! <laughs> Shh! Shuddy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so listen, I, as I understand it, there is one person there's one person who has not voted. <laughs> Name yourself. No, uh, no it's okay. You don't have to. You don't no, have to vote. If you don't... <laughs> listen. Oh, okay. Listen, if you you're don't not have invested. to vote. If you're not invested, invested, don't use your influence on this. You don't give a shit. Well, no. Everyone must answer. Things that could have been caverns or no caverns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got do, do, one. Do, 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 do. Don't no no. <laughs> okay, I've got uh, some people type <laughs> several times. That's why I'm having trouble here. <laughs> so definitely it was me. wasn't me. I was I was the one. It's Lona. me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so not joking. Brought to you by Taylor Swift. I'm not Taco joking. Bell. Hey, listen. Jesus Christ, our very Taylor first Swift. influence off is a tie. Oh my! So, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is a. It is actually six to six. This is a hotly contested thing. The Ooh, person wow. I am going to give the person who did not vote two seconds Ooh, to gosh. vote if they would like to have a complex underdark ah. that connects all the continents. Or if they would like to have a cave system that only connects one of the continents. Otherwise, I'm going to roll a d20 on the dice cam. And dice cam, dice cam. I mean, now do I kind of just want to see the dice cam. Just do okay. the dice cam. Who cares about? I want to. I want to see the dice cam now that it's not actively threatening the well-being of me and my loved ones. <laughs> Listen, folks, go out there. Now I'm excited for it. That's why you vote. I wish yeah, there was a way to get vote. every vote counts. Viewer vote votes for this. I <laughs> demand a recount. <laughs> Stop the vote. zombies from voting. <laughs> what are we talking the about? The results of this vote was so contested. Wrong. They validated. Wrong. We're gonna get canceled. <laughs> Hold on. Real quick off <laughs> you. What, what is the consensus, Grant? What's happening? I didn't. I didn't get a vote from the person who did not vote. So we're rolling. Okay. Dice. Okay. Dice. Um, dice. The rolling. The chat dice. is clamoring for the dice cam. The dice cam Oops. is live. I have a set, a very special set of rainbow elixir core dice Ooh. that I've gotten. Um, these are from Fan Roll, uh, and they're actually all liquid core, and they're all different colors. Which is really cool. So I've got Ooh. this. Um, oh my gosh! This Ooh, pink you better everyone. link me so I can buy I know. those I'm like with my real person money. <laughs> and I think my dice cam just froze. No, <laughs> no. That was funny. Perfect. No one will ever know. Ooh, they're so this pretty. This system is meant to be a mystery. 
Question mark. <laughs> The non-frozen dice cam is brought to you by Fanroll Dice. Once again, <laughs> check them out. Ooh, there's an echo. Oh, oh yeah. I think I that's because I took my headphones off. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, you just get to hear my voice in double. How do I? Are you wandering around this world like a long, dark cavern or system? I like how <laughs> we went. Check? We went so long without having any problems, and then. It's because I fixed oh, mine. I thought you were gonna. That's right. We went so long oh, where everybody was working oh, together fault. and agreeing. I think <laughs> now, so no, I. This is a hundred percent what I want from World Weavers. I think we are still working together. We are still working together. By the way, we are not against each other. We are working. No, together. That's what you we're hundred percent. their headphones. We're hundred. I'm coming for you next. <laughs> When we're not in actual play, you're a hundred percent not working together. I don't know why. Carlos oh, said that. okay. Sorry. What's Carlos's continent? I'm at war with that continent. Oh, yeah. War. Oh my God. Listen, I will bring the thunder down upon your country <laughs> so hard. I will salt your fields. <laughs> oh, Bean only you lasts for our... two. Time out. Time out. What? I was I was telling them time out so that we could hear you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, he's Sorry, he's so far guys. away. Grant with Fanroll Dice. I've got this awesome uh, wooden tray that I've gotten from Fanroll and these rainbow elixir core dice, which are uh, all different colors. Very exciting. I'm going to be giving these away at the end of the current arc that we are on. And we're going to be Ooh. using these. And who knows who we will kill with these puppies. So the way that we're Ooh. doing this <laughs> so is maxed in. Is going to be odd. Carlos is going to be even. Mm. And we roll. What do you think it is? Let the gods decide. We can't see it. We can't see it. Oh, wait, so wait. this is wait. happening. No, in never real mind. Life we can. Oh. I, wait. I thought you said even. it was frozen, but. It's even? It's even? It's even. Ha ha! So that was. I think that was that's Carlos. Carlos. So just right. tunnels under the continent, not under the water. Correct. Yes. yes. Oh. Yeah. Just under the Manhunter mm -hmm. Valley. Matt Hunter? I don't know how to say it. Matt well, Hunter no, Valley not... continent. Not... Yeah. That continent has a hole, but like that continent doesn't have a name right now. So that... Right. 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 So, is there no under under dark in any other continent? No, that's to say. Maybe. Say yeah, that. we don't know. Yeah, we okay, didn't say well, that. I say. Yeah. That okay. There They're is. They're just not connected. Everyone who no, they don't exist. <laughs> everyone who voted with Carlos needs to make sure they expend the influence that they just spent. Haha! <laughs> I didn't vote with Dick. me, so trick question. I get to keep my influence. <laughs> that is Are you mm, the person that didn't that's vote. Not true at all. Yeah, he <laughs> did. He did <laughs> vote. I was about to. Pretty funny. <laughs> We've uh, been bamboozled. Psychological warfare. Bamboozled. <laughs> One second. Bam. Bam. Um, so they are not connected by caverns, at least. Who knows what other machinations are in this world, though? Um, so let's go back to the map. Do 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 do. <laughs> All right, and that bring that was crazy, Renee. So your cave system has. Yeah! Uh, started quite the fun. This is what I am I here know. for on World Weavers. I didn't expect such discourse from the caves, but here we are. Um, so I think that this cavern system is called the uh, Valry Caverns. Because I do kind of want to throw back to you. I did love the name. <laughs> oh Valry. my god, Valry um, Caverns. Oh my god. The Valry oh, Caverns. Um, and they are known as like a place that people do not go to. Um, mm -hmm. They were named after the famous explorer. Um, uh, let's see, what's his name? Valerie we'll Valerie. Say, Valerie Valerin. Valerie Valerie. Valerie. Um, <laughs> Valerie Valerie. Uh, no, I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm Bob gonna Valerie. say <laughs> Bob Valerie. Um, maybe we don't know his name. Maybe his name has been lost to time because I can't think of a first lost. name and I don't have the the Grant thing. He was just Grant called Valerie. Valerin. He yeah. could just Grant have Valerie. Valerin. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll say the Valerin Caverns. Um, they are treacherous. Um, 
the majority of people that go there are people that are hiding out for like reasons like they are deserters from armies or they are escaping from like legal restitution or something of that nature. Um, but really no one that goes down there is ever heard from again. And partially mm. because of these like spooky, massive naked mole rat friends. Um, nah. But then also maybe there's, maybe there's something else going on down there. And maybe. I don't know. Maybe. So it's just New York. Got it. And got a lot it. of Roombas. Yeah, it's uh, got it. A lot of Roombas. A lot of Roombas. Very clean. Hey. It's very clean. It's immaculate. <laughs> except so for the couple clean, of the corners. I don't know why. Except for the bones. <laughs> um, uh, Maggie, give me a landmark or city or something in relation to this continent. I think I'm so deeply intrigued with this cavern system now. Um, I know. Let's keep going. Well, so I've been looking at this little kind of township that we have at the very top. And I know when we first developed the map, we talked about that being sort of like the last stopping point before you could go to like the upside down island, if I'm not mistaken. The comet. It's the tourist it's spot. Like yeah. Tourist right. It's like yeah. the tourist spot. Here's my thought. What if there actually is a way to access the caverns from that town mm. as well? But it's kind of like their little deep, dark secret they don't tell anybody about. In Which town? like basements and stuff. The, yeah, the like the one at the very top of the continent mm. that we had made the little tourist town for anybody going on a pilgrimage to the it, upside dude, down. I was island. legitimately yeah. thinking that it would be fun to do like smuggling, like soup, right? Yeah, like it, out of like. Or moonshine maybe, operations like boot, maybe like, like the other lower towns like if they have prisoners they send mm. them up there and nobody knows where they're going and they're just getting thrown into the tunnels or some stuff like i don't know oh, yeah. there could be some shady you're stuff just going saying on it's underground tunnels. australia yeah 100 percent it's just referred to as the, the land down under down under, under. that is what's called land down well. under <laughs> land down and under no, it's land down under. Under. It's it's not the underdark. It's the dark down under. The That's under, what we're calling yeah. it. Dark down the under. Down under yeah. dark. Love it. I the do under, love dark, the idea under. that any subterranean species or like groups of people do have to have an Australian accent. Yeah. Because <laughs> yes. they're from down under. They're from down dark under. Down under. Yeah. The yeah, dark down elves. Down. <laughs> no. Yeah, girls. Sidebar: Have you guys ever heard somebody from Australia say the word "no" because it's been stuck in my brain no. for days? No. Nar. 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 It's amazing. I love it. I'm sorry to any Australian fans we may <laughs> or what we all just. Did. Um, I think we'd like to say "ad" at this point. Ad. Um, no, we no, love no, all our no. fans down all under under. Coming. Yes. Down Somewhat. under down under. Oh, the down goodness. under it's, under. Down it's the under, dark under. down under. I the dark down that's under. That's the best they come one. From the dark down under. The D D U. D D U. Living in the dark down under. <laughs> Carlos, add something to this <laughs> insanity. Uh, Carlos, please. Dark elves will open and kill people. No, now add All something right. to the song. <laughs> add something to the continent. Oh, dang! Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, I would like there to be a great oh, river. Ooh. I like a river. <laughs> and so it shall be. <laughs> declared. Oh, uh, I didn't say it. I declared it. <laughs> so, I declare yes. river. Declared river. Uh, I'd like there to be a river uh, that kind of flows from the mountain that kind of goes Ooh. not that way. That is not what I want to do. <laughs> the undoing. <laughs> That's hilarious <laughs> that it yeah, says annoying. it says undoing, which is like the name of what happened to our place. That is uh Incarnate did a good job for us. Thanks, Incarnate. Did so, we get it from Incarnate? Or did we come up with that on our own? No, that, I think that's just was there. Just happy thing. coincidence. Yeah, just okay. Happy coincidence. The so, yeah, yeah. That is what I'd like. I like Beautiful it. river. Uh, Amazing. There are lots of different uh, maybe like it's not as many resources, but because it is somewhat fresh frozen water, there is like people who do live near and on this river, and it is crossed to get to the uh, town that is not named. I don't think yet, and uh, 
the other half of the continent. So how is it flowing okay. is this river? How say what now? How fast flowing is it? Like you said it has it's good fresh water from the mountains. Is it like a rapids river? Is it a just kind of trickling uh, river? Is it Maybe fresh, mine? never frozen? Fresh, never frozen. <laughs> this I'm river brought curious. to you by Wendy's. <laughs> I'm also curious because this river does exist in the tundra, which would be, assumedly be very cold. So now uh, Wendy's and Taco Bell so would have, have to, to fight. Have to be traveling pretty fast to not influence this. Yeah, I would, or say, it could be salt water. Uh, I would say that since the other half out. of the other half. Freeze. Or it's harder of, to freeze. It has to be colder. Since the other half of the world is unknown, this is just a, uh, no pun intended, remnant of that other half. And the water flows easy enough, but it's not freezing. So it is unlike it's... It is unlike Can it's... I- spend and this is just me 100% being a marine biology nerd but also going to um Andy you had the the big creepy like sea monster mm-hmm. constellation right okay so can i would it be okay to spend a point to say that in this river there are like the fantasy equivalent of greenland sharks because Ew. they live in those are scary no, they're not. They're cute. They live to be like 400 years old. They're You've old offended Renee. <laughs> I love sharks. They're my favorite animal. No. Um, oh, no. They, live, they live in like cold waters. They live specifically in cold waters mm. and they live to be like hundreds of years old. And so for like these reasons, they're kind of like revered. Oh, Can we call them broomskins? connections to the... <laughs> They're called broomskas. Why are they called broomskas? I don't know. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to weave. I'm not. Sorry, I'm just... world weavers. I'm trying to weave. Weave. No, I do love the oh, idea. Okay, okay, my Carlos, do you even have points left? Like a joke? <laughs> I, I'm not using influence points. I just asked. I asked. No, we if... can absolutely call them broomskas, but I do like the idea of there being like specific to this river a species of animal that is like very long living that is associated to like one of the constellations can they look like for whatever those reason. sharks are but have turtle shells yes yeah first of Bruce all is- i have a lot of influence points so just just keep that in mind can we talk about oh, the do you? have you been marking did. off the influence you've been spending <laughs> i have Carlos? actually i have what would you like to know i'll tell you anything you want how much do you have? How much do you yeah, have? Yeah, and Andy rolled big, so. I I rolled, I had two coming the, in, and I rolled a five, so do the math ooh, on that one. That's seven. That's seven. Okay. <laughs> Carlos so is good at math. Than, I have more than you, <laughs> sir. You have more than I do? <laughs> yeah, I do. How what? many do you I haven't spent any. Oh, I haven't spent any. bang up on you. Wait, what? time out. How do you have more? The max you could have is seven. Me? Because he's already yeah. spent some. Because he oh, has spent okay. some. Okay. I thought you meant like from the base. I was Carlos, like, wait, no. Carlos now has math been, doesn't make sense. Carlos has been the big spender this session. Uh, so real quick, pause, DM. That was really funny, but DM moment here. I just want to be clear. There are sharks called Broomska sharks with turtle shells that live in the fresh, never frozen river. Correct? Yes. Yes. And when Renee he- has spent one influence point to make this real to yes. make that happen are they aggressive no or are they chill oh, no they're so cute Excellent. they're so sweet they are they're chill. like nurse sharks in temperament like they're like very chill unless you like fuck with them and then they'll except like, the mating season some they're very say, chill they're like some say that uh <laughs> Some say that Mallory, Valerie's close friend, Richard Broomska, is the first person to <laughs> discover God, the Broomska I sharks. That. I did hear that. that. Yes. I um, would like to spend an influence. Okay. Oh, boy. Because I liked what Renee said earlier. Okay. This is not a so fresh, never frozen river. This is an incredibly salty river. And for reasons that are unknown... Mm-hmm. The rivers that the the water that flows down from these mountains is has a high salt content. It is not safe to drink. 
Ooh. And, and in that fact, would make very sense little. Why there's not a lot of settlements next to it. And a lot of places can't. A lot of creatures can't live near or off of this water, except for these very interesting sharks, so which travel upstream to mate. Mm -hmm. But they don't, don't die. Is. They live long, beautiful lives. They live forever. They're <laughs> they live forever. Okay. They They're very salty. So many of these salty as fuck. Uh, does anyone contest the salt? Going once. And Maxton, expend your influence point. The water is now salty. Uh, the creatures do not live forever, though. <laughs> I am not going to. They're <laughs> not immortal. That's a DM, it's a um, DM spot there. They live yeah. forever in my Wait. heart. They live forever in your heart. I will allow that. <laughs> um, okay. Then we are going to be. Uh, we have two more rounds to do here. Um, <laughs> uh, so, first thing that I want to do. Are we doing on time? We got some time. First thing I want to do is um, we'll do the valley last and then the tribe last. Um, I'm actually going to make an executive decision and we're going to save a little bit of uh, some things about the towns and the governments of those towns. We're going to save those for later just for the sake of time and we're going to move on Right now, I'd like to talk about your tribe and your tribe's rival. So, um, this is going... Did you have something? Somebody, Carlos, I think, was going to say something? Did anyone need to revise something? Oh, I was going to say I did, uh, I did like naming that city that I put next to the Besmv, um, Catspray Con. I did type it into the... The, I did, for me. Oh, yeah. It's in the <laughs> I typed it into Roll20. Oh. Casper okay, Khan is, yeah, I agree with Casper Khan. I think that's a great name. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so what I need everyone to do so that you can start thinking about it is tell us one thing about, and remember you can always fuck my prompts and do whatever you want, but I would like you to say one thing about your tribe and then say one thing about your tribe's number one rival. So this requires some backstory. Uh, this is going to be the Grand Clan Tournament of the Matt Hunter Valley. So inside of this uh, basin that we've created, the Matt Hunter Valley, so named, uh, every 40 or 50 years, uh, there is something that occurs called the changing. And during the changing... Everything inside this valley, believe it or not, changes. And this is a very rapid, rapid process. This occurs overnight. So the flora and the fauna change overnight. Uh, it is believed by some to have something to do with the heart of the Matt Hunter Valley, which is that crystalline spire that was described uh, early on. Um, so inside of this valley, we're bringing, we're starting our origin story, the day of the changing and all the tribes from around the Matt Hunter Valley, from around Katzper Khan and from the woods and from the tundra, even basically everyone from this continent, uh, that participates in this come together, um, for the grand clan tournament of the Matt Hunter Valley. And the point of the Grand Clan Tournament of the Matt Hunter Valley is to explore the valley and to see what creatures are there, what is uh, the terrain is like, to map it out, what resources can be used, what things need to be avoided, what can be um, good, bad, so on and so forth. And this can be anything in the valley. The valley can be a series of floating rainforest islands. It can be a savanna. It can be a desert it could be a labyrinthian hedge mage you, hedge maze you know what i mean like it could be mm -hmm. anything the changing is uh, a curse so we'll need to be thinking of what it looks like in the valley what creatures are there and things like that and so the tribes get together into this moot and the moot explores the valley uh, centered from the biological and ecological society of the Matt Hunter Valley. Um, and your tribe has lost this competition 
for 16 Grand Clan tournaments. That's a long time. This is like (laughs) an 800-year loss streak. For clarification, um, just to kind of like make it clearer to our listeners and to all of us, is the the changing something that's like, is it timed out? Like, do we know when it's going to happen? Or do we just mm-hmm. wake up and like, we went to bed and we were living in like Sedona, Arizona, and then we wake up and we're in like Ecuador? <laughs> um, it is overnight and you do know when I, it's coming. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It is. Amazing. It has to do with the um, lunar and solar cycles. So this occurs every 50 years, 40 to 50 years, but you know when it's Amazing. coming because it has to do similar to like our solar eclipses. They're never exactly 50 mm, years right. apart. Yeah, right, like right. Seven. But we, we can forecast when they're going to happen and yes, be you aware of it and so be ready you, for it. Okay. You have traveled to the moot in preparation for the changing. The changing has happened. And your tribe has lost 16 moots in a row. 800 year loss streak. And your number one rival, I'm not going to say anything about them. I imagine they've won before, or perhaps you're in contest with them for resources normally. Oh, I'm sure they've won plenty of times. Oh, I'm so sure. We'll see how that goes down. But I want (laughs) to know one thing about your tribe. And I want to know one thing about your number one rival. Um... Or you can change the prompt as you so desire. Quest I think quick. Carlos had a question. Yeah. 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 Could I share my screen still, or are we good with the map? Um, we will I need will. you to prepare a new map. Of, of well, no, map. I think I think I'll do of the map of the valley, and we'll just do oh, theater oh. of the mind for this. So here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I already prepared. Mm. <gasps> Boy. Carlos, how did you know? Carlos, how did you know? I... Carlos, how... Wait, Carlos, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos is a divination wizard. Everybody be Heard cool. Heard it here Everybody first, folks. Cool. Everybody be cool. <laughs> That's so Carlos. Alright, keep talking. That's so Carlos. <laughs> do something else. Keep singing your theme song. <laughs> no. Never mind. How else. juicy it are could be your zoomed dads? in even more, Carlos. Like you could just create a new new map. Okay. Valley. I'll let I'll let Grant do it then because I don't want to mess up Whatever. his flow. Oh, no, right. you're okay. okay. Hey. Right. Uh Andy, <laughs> tell me something about your tribe. And tell me something about your rival tribe. Absolutely. This can be anything. It can be... And before I forget, my town on the map, going back, is named Ly. E-L-Y. Just pronounced Ly. For Carlos' sake. Um, okay. So for our clan, um, E-L-Y, um, I picture it as we are very much like hunter-gatherer types. We... We eat with what's provided around us in the valley. Very much like somebody's going to go out, pick something off the ground, and just kind of eat it as a snack. Um, not not prepared foods, not shipped in, not a lot of export, import. Just very much live with what's given. Um, where our rival clan is very much the opposite. They like their imported foods. Um mm. They like the specialties. Mm-hmm. They like the naked roll mat, roll um, rat bear hunted <laughs> down guys. and made into a delicacy. Um, they're they're not. They're the type to kind of look down and scoff upon like eating things out of the tree. And it's all got to be prepared. It's all got to be made. It's all got to be spiced and special and flavorful. Um, I salute in preparations. Yes. <laughs> Man, so they they do not support local. Like, why are they even they at this not. moot? Honestly, <laughs> like if they're win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Can I? Can I use? I guess. I guess I'll use an. I'll, I'll use an influence point. Okay. Um. Because I do want to modify just for my character, who is a chef. I totally agree with everything andy said except i do think that there is some value in our tribe of creating dishes from the local things that can involve a little bit more than just raw eating yeah but it's a very risky and very (laughs) random 
one day you get one one moot you're getting Chinese, the next moot you're getting Mexican. Like you have no idea what 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 it's gonna be. That is so true. It's, it's yeah. a little more experimental. Being a chef around the changing would be quite the uh, profession. That would be uh, super fun. Um, yeah. Frustrating, but so that, much. Fun. That sounds good. That's that's kind of what I was intending. It just didn't come across quite that way. Um, yeah, I. Yeah, we, I don't think that cuisines. requires an expenditure. Okay. I think I, it's... I thought it might, so but that, I wanted to make sure. So the idea is that the rival clan relies on like a more consistent, like they spend the extra bucks in order to, because they can to bring in more consistent foodstuffs. Mm -hmm. You're right. Okay. They they okay. they eat What's some known... of the stuff around them, but they like right. a lot of other things shipped in. Right. Right, 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 right. Maxton, tell me something about your tribe and tell me something about the rival tribe. And the second one of you comes up with a name, let me know. Um, yeah, I think our tribe is one of the fewer tribes that really stays around and within the valley during the entirety of the life cycle. Mm. Whereas you said some tribes and some some research groups come from outside and come in just for this event and maybe for a little bit of time afterward. I think we're one of the tribes that like we are we're homegrown baby you know we're we're here we've we've our families have have been dealing with this for a hundred sixteen generations at least mm -hmm. um and I do think that the rival tribe has won the last three in a row three so in a, a row one, yeah yeah they're like a one fifty win streak right now and that real that stings that stings pretty good what was the name of the rival town in parks and rec Eagleton. Eagleton. Eagleton, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, it's just what popped into my brain. Mm -hmm. Um Emily, tell me something about your tribe and your rival clan. Our tribe, <clears throat> I would say, has a very it takes a village mentality of there are like you are born to your parents, obviously, but the kids all end up knowing each other like it's just kind of a going over to little timmy's house isn't that different from going to your own it's just kind of everyone is welcome because they have a much more communal feel um the rival clan i would say comes from <clears throat> going to like the ex the imported resources they have a more <clears throat> i don't no, the word for it. I don't like the word developed. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, no, like... Is it like they're more cloistered within themselves, or... I'm trying to think of, like, if you're... If this village like, is very much take care of everybody, is this more like everybody's sort of their own little bubble, or... Yes. Where it's very much, like, even within, so our clan is very much our clan. That's a good way to phrase it, of, like, very communal. I'm doing a 180. Ignore all of the developed and whatever comments. The rival clan has even rivalries within their clan. Where, like, this family within the clan, mm. this family within the clan. Entire. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. It is very much all for one and one for all in our clan. The rival clan is very much, like, family units that still work together and like they have friends within the family units mm -hmm. but they are very much family units and competitive you never go against the yeah family. slytherin exactly i mean uh, i am definitely not basing this at all on the okay, harry and draco um we don't uh, need to spread more Slytherin hate, okay? This little this I'm not hating on Slytherins, I'm just going to against rivalry. Slytherin here. There's just some Listen, I'm married to a Slytherin, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something about your clan and your rival clan, Renee. So I think that within our clan, within the idea of solidarity against the other clans that are coming in for the tournament. There's a very local versus tourist mentality where mm -hmm. it's like, we can swindle these goobers out of things. Mm -hmm. And that is very much where 
my character kind of falls into things. But um so yeah, there there is a lot of kind of like Sure. Some may call it predatory. <laughs> some may. But uh is it is it really predatory <laughs> if it's punching upwards? Huh? Is that the thing? So there is a lot of swindling of these like bougie clan members that are coming in for the tournament to kind of like oversell them on like souvenirs and kitschy things. You're saying we sell a lot of two moon Roomba shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Two Roombas and one of these fucking sharks just howling at the two moons, like, in the background. <laughs> My um, god. And the other, the, the, the flip side of that is that the, the members of the other clan don't necessarily realize that they're getting swindled. They think it's, like, this cool, like, ironic, like, fashion statement that they're rolling back into their town and being like, huh, I got this shirt during the tournament and they're like repping it without realizing that they overpaid for it by like 250 percent so it's kind of like that very like wealthy entitled like separation from like realizing like they have enough money that they don't have to worry about it so they don't realize that they're getting swindled on things and gotcha. we all have a laugh at them at that expense got it dennis and flowers I have a potential name that I would like to put forward. Okay. The Modisher clan. Is that yours I'm... or the rivals? Ours. So it is, I looked up Harvester in German, and okay. that's how I, based on the spelling of the thing, the Modisher Modisher. clan. <clears throat> Modisher. That is not at all how you say the Harvester in German. One of our, but... Can one of our elders be Mama Mod Modisher? <laughs> Mama Modisher, yes. Am I and spelling that is it correctly? Just... So I had imagined it M A H D I C H E R or something like that. Got it. Modisher. Modisher. Just a suggestion. I might take out the C. Yeah. I like names based in like mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. words in other languages and kind of twisting them so not like roombas and cams of <laughs> <laughs> what no what okay i did uh, yeah. i do not own a roomba and That's my brain on. did not realize roomba until <laughs> maxton said it <laughs> uh okay i love i like that name but, but my friend does and we feed it cheetos <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, so fucking random. Um, Maggie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me something about uh clan Modisher and the rival clan. So I've got an interesting perspective because not to go into too much detail, my character is originally from the rival clan. So mm -hmm. my opinions about the current clan she finds herself in and the rival one are a little different than everybody else's. But I think the easiest way or best way to maybe describe how I picture it would be the clan we're in currently is sort of like... I don't want to say like out in the country, but definitely like they have found ways to try to not affect the natural order of things as much as possible. So they don't maybe, they maybe have not like hard and fast like cobblestone roads, but rather have sort of like allowed whatever paths are most often traversed to create sort of a pathing or a road system, but are never going to like dig it up to prepare like actual, mm. you know, cobblestone or asphalt or however it may be. Quite on the flip side, I think the rival clan is very much like a city, as much as mm. a city as we could get in. A lot of wealth, a lot of infrastructure um, that is, you know, I don't want to say like fancier, but maybe would be seen as, you know, fancier or unnecessary because it so kind of divorces the area from the natural order around it. Is Absolutely. it more like industrial kind of thing? Not um, like steam and metal but as close as you could get for i guess 
how we are in a certain way. I th- I I I've always thought of it as more like a lot of more business going through than mm. necessarily like industry. Um, in an ideal world, the I know we took the map down, but the sort of like up but middle right little town that was sort of closest to our crater island. I thought that might be an interesting sort of like capital city or whatever. Um, mm. So that's kind of what how I imagined to be because they would be sort of you know the next stop down would be where the college is and the bigger city before you get to the actual little outpost that everybody meets up at. Got it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Clan Modisher is, uh, works kind of like with Mother Nature and mm-hmm. the rival clan tries to bend it to its will. Right. Those bastards. <laughs> I kind of like the... This is a little bit of a DM um, putting myself into this, but the uh, I kind of like the idea of them not cheating like against the rules cheating, but cheating like in the spirit of like living in this valley. I kind of like this idea that they kind of use magic to make their immediate surroundings not change. So like it changes like outside of this like magical bubble. But the rival mm-hmm. clan actually just has the same environment they've had for like 200 years now. They don't actually have to like. But so they can just keep developing off of that, basically. Yeah, they don't oh, have I to like live that. in the yeah. changing. They just live like I totally buy that. in the changing. Mm-hmm. Because I think then they would come at the changing and at this tournament from an um, almost a mindset of like, we're kind of a step above it because we don't have to be affected by it. But we certainly are interested and are going to come study it for our own benefit. And, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I like that. I dig that. That was my one influence point that I rolled. So <laughs> I'm done. That's nice. That that goes well, too, because the I think the the tournament started from the need for the peoples living in the valley about way back when in the early prehistory of wherever the hell. The, the the tournament started because the changing would happen and all the people living there would be like well, where's the water now? Where's the fresh right. water? And like so they would all get resources. together. Yeah. Not even yeah. fighting, actually. It originally okay. was like, let's get together and find the water so we can all live. We don't have to be friends after that, but at least we'll do this collaborative we'll thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll find the water, and then we can all go back to hating each other. Yeah. <laughs> as as a clarification point on the... The clan tournament is... Like it's a research thing. It's not a I found this first, so my tribe yes. gets it. It's right. Correct. I found it. Here it is for everyone. We win. Or we here are changes first. that we have. Yeah. You know, this used to be okay. a water source, but now there's a new bacteria that we found in it, and probably we yeah. shouldn't be using this water source. That's mm-hmm. how I interpret it. Yeah, like different yeah. those little nitty gritty details. Yeah, are what make or break the the competition really? It's a it's a competition, but it is still with a co op base. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the competition came from the need to cooperate in order to survive, in order to find what was needed to survive after all of your home changed. Mm-hmm. And now it's kind of continued on as, you know, the spirit of the competition has continued on as like, yay, we're all gathering and sharing things together. Mm-hmm. Except for these mm-hmm. jerk faces. These they jerks. Come in. Except for the winners. <laughs> yes, Except for the winners. Yeah. Carlos, tell me something mm. about uh, Clan Madisher and the Rival Clan. And someone give me a goddamn name for the Rival Clan. Udraki. Whoa. Udraki. What is that from? I made it up. Her brain. It kind of, <laughs> Her brain. It kind of sounds okay. like my person's last name, and I like to think that they're like a really wealthy oh like an established family things. in yeah, the clan. Like, oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. You're like a trust fund kid. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Okay, Carlos, tell me something about Clan Madisher and Clan Udraki. Uh, can Clan Madisher all be vegetarians? Sure. There, that's what sure. I'd like. And then, uh, <laughs> I I don't know about the other clan. Um, Strictly carnivore. Oh me. <laughs> 
Only. Yeah, I was gonna say it's just only an entire me. clan of like that liver, liver king kings? motherfucker. Liver, yeah. It's just an entire clan of liver king. Why did we both yeah. reference liver king. I hate that he's that <laughs> the collective conscience. It's not he's, natural, so he's the worst. So good. Um, I think the uh, I think the other clan maybe might not be super spiritual. Maybe they they don't necessarily they kind of tie into that magic use uh and they rely more on themselves and they kind of are more maybe agnostic versus the world versus the other clans potentially okay got it everyone cool with the vegetarianism yeah yeah can yeah. i make a i'm gonna spend a a influence point on just a clarification of well, it's not even a clarification. A question: Are they vegetarian by choice or vegetarian by necessity? Or choice, all choice. Great. Yeah. Then never it mind. It does I don't make need sense. I mean, it does make sense because, like, trying to raise livestock in a constantly yeah. changing True. biome True. is nightmarish, right? But you right. can always like forage like fruits and stuff like that. I mean, maybe and, for like, you guys, we have our magical. <laughs> Herding bubble pens Herding where we grow chickens pens. for <laughs> the size of Romnas. <laughs> okay. I love that that's a size comparison now. <laughs> yeah, there's it's it's the about room. two Romnas. It's about three Romnas <laughs> long. Um, It'll be so big. Americans will do anything to avoid using the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then. Oh Carlos, are you ready? Well, I'm going to do the valley map, actually. So just because I I have to, like, make it encounterable and things like that and fun. <laughs> you have to actually design a some sort of adventure or campaign that happens here? I don't Something understand. Something like that. Who knows? Um, Who knows? So what I'm going to be asking you next is to begin to craft this valley. I will try to lead you along with prompts. Feel free to ignore my prompts. Um, and we'll go through... And I imagine um, we'll go until we have what seems like a pretty uh, good world here. So what I want to do is the way that I want to play this is I'd like to introduce our characters. Um, and then I would like to basically wake up the next morning, come out of your traveling cart or your traveling tent or however you've gathered here together. And then we will look out into the valley. So... We arrive at the small town that surrounds the biological and ecological society of the Man Mat Hunter Valley for the Grand Clan Tournament of the Mat Hunter Valley, which you have to say loudly at all times and do jazz hands. Um, <laughs> and I imagine this place is relatively well, like people live here it is a gathering place like it is a place where people have traveled to and from so long some people have just stayed and there is a beautiful large stone temple here that uh kind of commemorates the past changings and people make murals and they make statues of different creatures that have lived here during different changings and different landscapes Ooh. and landmarks and things like that and the artists kind of gather here and depict and so the previous um, mural is revealed the night before, and you see these these crazy white water rapids, and there's dinosaurs, and there is just this jungled um, place, and they've revealed this big mural with some carvings of some of the different types of dinosaurs. Uh, and you uh, spend the night as you will. I I was gonna role and play just the like night the before. dinosaurs the dinosaurs <laughs> went the way of the dinosaurs the dinosaurs <laughs> went the way of the dinosaurs yeah except for Aww. except for a few i imagine that there are some that have been taken mm. out of the valley which is something that maybe some of the clans didn't like but some of them have been <clears> removed <throat> from the valley and have been preserved so there are like Ooh. some small Dinosaurs. We have a Jurassic Park situation potentially. Is what you're saying. Some people were Jurassic. against it. <laughs> some <laughs> people <laughs> think it's like played on kazoo in the background. Some people think that the magic of the valley should stay in the valley, but recently people have made efforts to preserve some of this through the biological and ecological society of the Matt Hunter Valley. Wow. Um, <laughs> so uh, what I'd like to do is, as you kind of 
come uh, out from your cart or your tent. I don't know if you how you traveled exactly. I'd like to introduce our characters. Um, and the first one up uh, that is going to come out and all of the other clans are kind of awakening to as the sun rises over this changing. Uh, Andy, introduce your character. What is this uh, character's name? And what do they look like? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, my character's name is Nuna, and uh, Nuna Keenheart, and she is a huge uh, minotaur uh, with two sets of horns. Um, don't know if she was born that way or accidentally like got affected by the area. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> she's got. Uh, she's mostly white with black spots um, and a big long tail. She wears very bright colors because she thinks they're cool. So she's got this big pink jacket and these big goggles and she just loves rocks and flowers and all of the local flora, really. Uh, and she's currently just like sleeping on the grass. Just just right on the ground. There's no Ted's. There's probably next to a cart. <laughs> Not hers, though. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Maxton. Um, yeah, so you see kind of stumbling out of a um, a kind of ramshackle tent that is connected to a larger like um, kind of pavilion tent almost. It's not it's not massive, but it's it's larger. You see a um, a uh, kind of late 30s early 40s bugbear he has um kind of dark brown fur and golden eyes and kind of like a black black tufts of hair and beard um uh, uh, on his fur and he uh stumbles out um sort of half dressed and he's just uh nicola nicola hold on i got to i've cracked the last of the the T-Rex eggs. We gotta gotta get the grill going. These these suckers are gonna want plenty of breakfast, and I know these you know these are the last T-Rex eggs they're gonna be having in a while. So, but we gotta gotta get to where's the firewood? Oh shoot! Oh jeez! And he just kind of starts stumbling around uh, into this pavilion, which is a tavern, a traveling tavern. Ooh, excellent tavern. A traveling tavern. I adore that. Um, Emily. As it's perfect that he's stumbling into the tavern because as <laughs> Gordo stumbles oh, wait. into the. I'm sorry, tavern. I said Nicola. Yeah, I actually oh, should have said. <laughs> Anurin. Okay, go ahead. Anurin. You see Anurin Khan, who is a an orc. Um, so she's got dark green skin. But she is made up. She looks to be a early 20s as human standards would go by. Um, but she is made up. Like, take your college waitress who's really just trying to look good to get those tips. She's got a high ponytail, jet black hair. Um, and she is working all that she has. And she has a lot. She's got the curves. She's got the chest. And on her shoulder <laughs> is a giant long-eared owl. Mm. And so as uh, Gordo comes stumbling in, yeah, yeah, I know I heard you cracking the eggs and I have been up for 10 minutes. So let's do this, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I think, wait, I think I could mix some of those. Uh, can I have some more of the, the, the owl feathers? Because I really think they add a nice umami to the dish. I really think it's going to be go over well this boot. Didn't enough um, people mud... choke last time? I tried to give I tried to give Nicola some of I added some like dirt and some like crushed up rocks and they didn't like that at all. So I really think that the feathers might add what I'm looking for, you know. Yeah, you're gonna have to take that up with Lauren himself. Um and you see the giant owl just like looks dead at you and flies away. <laughs> no, oh, just like come up on. to the rafters uh, of the tent. Alright. So she well, is Anurin is, rocks it is. <laughs> Anurin is tying on like a uh, serving waitress set up. She is the tavern waitress. Trying to make that money. Excellent. Uh, Renee? Mm -hmm. um, there is a gauche fucking um, let me look up the name of it really quickly. Uh, uh, 
gosh darn it get out of here stay signed out get away vardo uh that is parked outside and uh just just ornately designed and you see the door swing open it's a little bit later in the morning and this very well-dressed tiefling uh long black horns that kind of curve back and around her skull uh, long white hair kind of tied back into a uh, a ponytail, dressed immaculately, like beautiful clothing. Uh, long, flowing, dramatic cape, ornate rapier at her side, very hungover. <laughs> Comes kind of stumbling out and walks into the tavern area and uh, surveys the scene and sees that there's not a whole lot of people there and kind of stumbles up to the bar. And is like stretching and just kind of motions to um to Emily's character, who is um, Anu, who definitely knows Nicola as she walks in and just kind of knows exactly what her order is and without Nicola having to say anything, <laughs> like goes and starts getting her 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 food and her most important breakfast drink. Which as is as soon as Nicola an said Irish coffee, down. thank you very much. Yep. She just, without even looking, Anu just slides it over to you as she's, like, prepping the bar area. She already has it ready for you. <laughs> Inhales deeply, takes a deep sip, and just kind of... <sighs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Where is... Oh, Nicola. Uh... Thank goodness. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, is So the rocks yesterday, I know you said you mm. didn't really, like, was it the crunch or, like, the taste? I'm just <laughs> trying to figure out. I could... I mean, I don't know, geez. Oh, wait, I, I think I might listen, have some Gordo, honey, left I over. appreciate you so much. I will finish this coffee, and then I will give you my food critiques. All right, I'm putting Is the rocks okay? in then. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's that's all right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. And as he says this, she kind of, like, motions to, to, uh, to Aro to give her, Anu, rather, to give her another drink. And Anu is just shaking her head. Just, yeah, just, just, just let him do his thing. Yep. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Maggie. Looks like things are getting started for the morning. Yeah, so outside of what probably is one of the more ornate tents in the area, you see this young, maybe early 20-something hobgoblin very attractive for a hobgoblin too. She has gorgeous sort of bronzy red hair, um, sort of a goldish effect to her skin, bright blue eyes, sort of stumbling out, yelling behind her uh, to what, you know, anyone would presume to be her mom. No, listen, you said I had an hour before I had to do anything with these people. I'm going to go find my friends. When else are they ever going to be in this this town you've brought me to? And she starts, you know, down her little path toward the tavern, hoping to to run into some of her old comrades from from her former former group that she is in. Excellent. And Carlos, uh, making his way out of a smaller tent, uh, you would find uh, a little. Uh, Orange kobold comes out of the tent, looking quite confused, kind of surveys around, looks at his hands. He has white little horns that kind of protrude from his hair. He's wearing uh, deep red and blue robes that kind of are completed with chain mail, but the chain mail is pretty much just like intricate, like, rocks kind of melded together not like chain mail it's it's just like handcrafted it's like diy uh chain mail uh he has a shield and uh, he has a mace at his side and he would slowly walk into the tavern and he would just look at uh oh goodness uh no. goodness what is the character's name a new run a new run a new run yeah Anu. He'll just go to Anya and say, Um, hello? <clears throat> Morning, Delbo. Uh, Delbo! Mm, I see. Um, yes, I am Delbo, and Delbo is my name. Uh, may I have 
a drink of yeah. some sort. What kind of drink for you, Delpo? Whatever drinks I would like to f- drink. Please. Sure. Yeah. She's just gonna pull out like a morning ale and just be like, and just make eyes at Nicola, like. <laughs> I don't. Uh, we get an insight check to see. No, we're not rolling <laughs> dice. No, no hey. Yes! Dice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to um, steal from him. We can steal from him next week. We need to figure out this <laughs> valley, though. Um, so uh, we will pick up um, next week in at this scene, and you can pickpocket the shit out of him. Um, <laughs> the uh, valley, though. So this has changed. That valley, though. Overnight, the valley, though. Um, so we're going to start working through that. Uh, Andy. And this is post-change? This, this is, is post change. This is the okay. morning we of, woke up and here we are. Great. We have woke up, and everything in the valley has changed. Um, you can see kind of bits of it over these uh, ledges that this uh, society and the surrounding city is built on. Um, Andy, what would you say is the first thing someone would notice when they look into the valley? Um, I think the first thing somebody would notice and the first thing to wake up Nuna is there's horrible thunderstorms, but not covering the whole valley. The valley now has some weird dichotomy where the two halves have completely different weather systems. So one half of the valley right now is these torrential, very dangerous thunderstorms where the other side is very hot and dry. Um, and it's this very weird, just like almost perfect split down the middle that the two different sides are completely different. And it looks very odd. Mm. One would absolutely notice that. Is the closest side, is it split down the middle? Like, um, you could take a right and go to Rainland and take a left and go to um, Desert Land? Yeah, or is it's it like, like the far side? Is hot dog or hamburger? Yeah. yeah, it's like one of those, if you've ever driven down the highway and like you're hitting the edge of a storm and like half of the highway is dry and the other half is wet. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you're just looking basically down the line from where we are. So imagine I haven't had that situation. Is it a hot dog or a hamburger? Hot dog. <laughs> hot, hot dog. dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can go right or left and you'll be in two different right left, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. biomes. Is there anything in the middle or is it literally just that break in the weather? I Mustard. think I think it's pretty <laughs> there's not much, but like where they meet, some weird shit can happen. Okay. So it's it's not a big difference, but you can get some weird winds there, depending uh-huh. on what the two obviously mustard and ketchup in the middle no matter where (laughs) you are (laughs) maybe a little bit of relish relish a little bit of relish lettuce pickles down the middle i'm from chicago listen you gotta you gotta put a lot in there you know (laughs) i'm not i'm not a monster move on (laughs) move on (laughs) there is uh ladies and gentle folk our first food opinion from carlos on world weavers (laughs) you heard it her first uh doesn't know how to eat his hot dogs maxton tell me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um uh tell me on I didn't know we we're doing two valleys. Thanks, Andy. Uh Sorry. tell me on one valley, two weathers. <laughs> one valley, two weathers. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the the like the land systems are distant. Like I don't think okay. it's like tundra desert. I just think that the weather isn't the same on both. One side could be raining, one side could be sunny, one mm. side could be cold, one side Got could it. be warm. Um there might be slight I ask changes, a clarification like question. Does that kind of like do they stay split along those lines, or is there ever kind of like any kind of like morphing and kind of like blurring of the lines? I feel like, like do the weather systems ever encroach upon the other area? I think I don't I don't think so. But I feel okay. like at times they could be the same. I think it's just okay. random. So like Tight. there could be times okay. where they're both raining, but they could be that different. was my question. So it's not always raining on that side, it's just currently raining, yep. storming on mm-hmm. that side. And that's just showing us that they're okay. 
I think okay. there's just a distinction yeah. between the two weather patterns. I right. okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, 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 okay. It's not I that imagine... there's two different biomes. It's just that they two have two different like yep. weather systems mm -hmm. that exist independently of each other. Okay, right. okay, okay. Magically okay, 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 weird. Okay, okay. Only in the yeah. valley would that ever happen. Imagine yeah. you look mean. down the center mm -hmm. of the valley and you see the heart, and it's like the heart touches kind of the edge of the one of the storms. Yeah. I really like that. Is that consistent with how it had been prior to this morning? Had it? Have we always had maybe no. differing weathering systems, or this is the new thing? That this is new. new just this is a new just thing. Clarifying. Yeah, it Got was it. not split before. Um, in that way, at least. Can I? Oh, maybe this would be an influence spend for me. I know it's my turn. Really? I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak that a little bit, Andy. If that's okay, actually, because. What if it's this? There is a storm, a heavy, heavy storm front that is moving around the valley Ooh. in sort of a slow clockwise. It's it's it is split in the sense that there are differences, but it is a storm that moves continuously. Hmm. I'm just in my brain. I'm seeing it like a lava brain. lamp almost, where it kind of just like. Boop, boop, you lost what? me on that one, Ray. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Like the 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 the, the amorphous system. nature of yeah, it and like how it how along. it moves around. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, within with this you. confined space. I guess I guess the easier way to say it is the split is actually like rotating. The split is, right, is so turning. It's, like a... it's not a direct one always one side, always always left, always right. The the line that is cutting them is actually ro spinning around this mm -hmm. heart. So take a pokeball, put it with the the button up. That button is the spire or the spire at the center, and that line yes. like rotates. I, yes. <laughs> You're rotating it around. Yes, that's a crazy rotating way to think about it. But yes, I get it now. Um, okay, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't require influence from you since it is your turn, and that just seems like a modification of. What we already have unless andy disagrees in which case we can so it's decide. one side is always storming is the storm the storm rotates around the right valley. but it's always one, always a, I a thought, storm mm -hmm. i thought maybe storming. yeah on one of these lines there's always a storm that kind of sweeps around and the then the other half circle. just does its own thing yeah all right so basically, you guys are, imagine it's a circle, you're on a clock, and there's a storm front that's going to be coming over you at a, any given time, you know what I mean, uh, mm -hmm. over and over again. Um, okay. Uh, Emily, tell me how dense is the foliage? Um, it's actually trees? really patchy. Patchy. There... It is a strange combination of it is rainforest esque, but then there are like it's a reverse desert where there's rainforest and then there's like a patch of desert. Where mm. you know how deserts have little patches of oasis? Ooh. This is like generally rainforest thick jungle that has just like reverse uh, oasis. Yeah. Yeah. A reverse of just like patchy sand bits or things like that hmm. i like that that's fun i love that anything unique about the like pools of sand or the areas of sand or is that to be seen they don't get wet as the storm rotates like that's weird. it stays with it uh yeah except like for that. these reverse oasis -ies. like okay. it's as if there's a dome or something around it that the water just like the, says the, no the, oh, okay, the, like okay. clouds just sort of part around those spaces yeah kind of pretty much okay. yeah interesting it just like those patches serious. do not get a lick of liquid like everything else is dense rainforest and those are just like barren dry rock sand whatever yeah. else uh great um Maggie, talk to me about the... No, Renee, actually. Talk to me about the uh, terrain. Is it jagged? Is it hilly? Are there rivers cutting through it? Is there uh, 
is it flat? Uh, tell me about the terrain. I think that there is, given the nature of, because from what I'm remembering about the, uh, the, the, the map, I think that there is a river that begins to flow like out of like the very back end of the basin where all of the water kind of like siphons down from running off of the mountains and stuff like that and then kind of flows outwards to the coast from there. Um, the area surrounding the river itself is relatively flat um, and then gently kind of like dissolves into these rolling hills that then kind of like hit jagged terrain as they like get closer to the base of the mountain and kind of like start to ascend up. Um point of order does the terrain stay the same? No. Okay. So yeah, that's what we're working with for this cycle. So Okay. So there's so one saying there's oh yeah. There's one river. Yeah. How I, does well, it Well, I think I think it would be like there's like a a a kind of like reverse delta so like you know how like when rivers flow out to meet the ocean they kind of like end up dissolving out into different tendrils that like flow out into the ocean i think in this instance you have like this kind of like delta that stems from runoff from the rivers different like river mouths that come out of the mountains um or runoff from the mountains rather sorry not runoff from Is the there rivers a... that sounds silly do they flow into like a lake in this like near somewhere near yeah the i think that there would be like a larger kind of like gathering area and then from there there's like kind of like a massive pool that then kind of like extends into a river that flows out to the ocean okay. and there are so many sharks in it it's just full of sharks yes. just filled with <laughs> sharks <laughs> we did the whole okay. no i'm kidding i'm kidding time. i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> no this is sharks. friend dark this is great <laughs> Fun um, fact, no, didn't I'm... know about Emily. I don't like sharks. Oh, no. I love sharks. No. Like, you can talk you about them all start, you want. You better start liking oh, them, because they're going to be everywhere. <laughs> you best start believing in sharks, Mrs. Emily. <laughs> <laughs> You're next to one, and it wants to buy you an ice cream. Uh, shark, um, <laughs> shark monsters are put No, in. I'm kidding about the shark monsters. But I, I do like the idea so, of kind of like a larger, like, kind of lake-esque yeah. body of water that then has an exit canal that leads out to the ocean so uh, just for my my sake so you're you're saying yes in in the valley there's a lake that a whole bunch of small streams mm -hmm. flow f into from the mountains mm -hmm. and then from that lake the water flows out a sort of more major river or minor river that then flows all the way out of the valley assumedly through kind of past an area that this settlement is built in and then flows to the ocean i think so okay cool. right does but, that yeah. sound okay makes sense so great okay time. okay great this is way more normal than i thought it was going to be so far <laughs> i mean um, now we got turned it desert. up on that you got that much rain you're gonna have more the water's gotta go somewhere water's gotta yeah. go somewhere um maggie uh, tell me something about the fauna in this valley. Some of the new life that has sprung to be. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, as the rain area specifically finds its little path and we start to notice that it's, again, traveling on its little axis, um, the areas where there are more rain and more jungly and whatnot, abnormal amounts of frogs. So many frogs, it's like like we've never seen this many frogs anywhere before. And they mm. seem to travel with the rain specifically. Like if it oh was in one area for it's like a, a while. Roaming plague. A <laughs> roaming <laughs> frog plague. A little bit. And so like at first, you know, you wake up in the morning and the people who happen to be in the rainy area are like, Oh, there's a lot of frogs. That's gonna be a new thing. And then as that rain pushes off, it's like there's still frogs around because there were just so many of them and they're, you know, going to be opportunists. But they'd also notice that they kind of are following this rain. Inexplicably mm. so. But yeah, that's that's yeah. the big thing that, that we do. You know that also means crossing. that there's a, sh a shit ton of bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Man. This is just making me want to rewatch Prince <laughs> oh, of Egypt so oh. bad. <laughs> are these frogs of a normal size? Are they itty bitty? Are they giant? I think are like, they a whole range? 
I think a range, but definitely of that like that like tree frog variety, the kind that would be in mm. sort of wet areas. They're gonna look slimy. Some might be poisonous, some might not be, but that's just because of the vast number of them. There's gonna be poison dark frog rain. There oh, you nice. go. <laughs> I love it. Now, yeah, to be clear, so it is cute. not raining frogs. It is just that the yeah. frogs seem to be My by the Hallelujah, yeah. it's a rain of frogs. <laughs> You, you open your uh, mouth to let some of the rain fall on your tongue, and you realize oh. it's tadpoles. Oh. <laughs> tadpoles! I will use an influence point to ensure that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I will counter that and take, use an influence point to ensure take that all my influence happen. points. No. no tadpole rain. Thank you. No tadpole um, rain. Tadpole rain. There goes vegetarianism. Tad oh, oh, rain. Are we all eating? Does it matter if it's accidental or if it's a naturally occurring part of nature? Carlos. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> yes. Um so tell me let's do some more wildlife, I think, unless you have something you'd like to add to it specifically. I'd like to know we know bugs, oh. we know frogs. I wanted to add some an, an animal. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so I want there to be only specific to this valley mm -hmm. monkeys. And I want these monkeys to be like lemur size. And I want them to be like adaptable to their environment. So if it's super rainy and super wet, they can like grow gills or slimy skin. If it's like super hot, they like lose all their fur and become like naked, like Siamese monkey cat things. Oh, naked monkey. <laughs> You're naked introducing the most just, cursed sequel to Planet of the Apes that I've ever I, heard in my entire life. But I also, I want them to be like rainbow colored. I want them to be rainbow colored, like adaptable to their environment. Monkeys that are like the size of lemurs. Wait, is there skin are they like rainbow chameleon color? Chameleon monkeys? Yeah, That's what yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah, they like just like everything, everything about them is rainbow. Like they just have rainbow esque. They're just so the most nightmare Lisa Frank binder <laughs> that ever got made. <laughs> I'm buying three. I love it. I want I six of them, one for every class. Yeah. Are they aggressive or are they kind of chill? Oh, they're so chill. They're just okay. like they they just love everything. They will like do tricks for food. They uh some of them might get wild, a little bit aggro, you know, with the environment maybe and the, maybe they become vicious. Uh, sometimes they can get really big like gorilla size depending on amount of food like if there are like a, abundance of <laughs> if there's an abundance of food they get really big of their scarce a food big rainbow gorilla just charging at you through the rainforest Shut with a bunch of frogs through the frogs, frogs. Through the frogs. <laughs> yeah but i want i want them to have like floppy ears like a beagle and this just like you just keep adding shit this is the Somebody longest stop this man he's lost it <laughs> He's trying to drain somebody, influence so that he can somebody, do something crazy. Somebody, somebody in the chat point, is just vigorously somebody, drawing right now. Somebody <laughs> did point out in chat that we were using um, influence points like counter spells. <laughs> <laughs> just now, I cast influence. <laughs> no, counter your influence. I influence your influence. <laughs> this is not me trying to draw influence points. This is just, just me wants to read like these. No, rainbow no I, love I love it. This. I love it. I right like now. their ears. That's yeah. so cute. A good detail. Can we? Can, can we just for for this? Okay, so wait for the sake of my sanity right now. So I love these monkeys. Uh huh. Are they currently getting to gorilla size, or is that just like? Oh, in you don't get to know that. Hundreds of years. No, there's. Yeah, he we said, don't know that. He said very know. clearly they can, and if you say they can, <laughs> that means it's up to you. Well, truly. he is established. Yeah. He is okay. So let me ask. <laughs> so previously, they have been gorilla sized. It, it possibly seems, it seems no, that at no one possible. point we have lived here in the previous generation the previous he is establishing world weaving the previous generations of these <laughs> these rainbow monkeys rumor, need to know. rumor state rumor yes. has it that yes okay. on the wall the mural 
Next to the dinosaurs, <laughs> there's the giant fucking gorilla. <laughs> yes. Mm. yes. Riding oh, a dinosaur. We, we almost must remember that during the last changing that happened, a child did fall into the massive lemur gorilla. He no, saved no. Him. I know what they're he called. Just held him. I know what they're called. They're called they Mimus. 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 He yeah. saved, but he cradled the Nemu, just cradled the boy and waited until yeah. the oh, clans came and rescued. Yeah. Rip. So nice. the- Harambe the Nemu. Yeah. Oh. Harambe God. the Nemu saved. Remember, remember the Nemu, guys. There's a statue of him in the middle. Of it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <really>. He's <laughs> the real just in the middle of the town. There's just this giant uh, I think of Emily, Harambe the Nemu. <laughs> I think Emily's going to save us from this line of questioning. Or do you have a question no. about the well, Rainbow Gorillas? I don't have a question about the Rainbow Gorillas. I have a question. Yes. Are we doing another round of weaving? Yes. Or I'm gonna can do... I spend... Okay. I'm going to do a lightning round where I would like you guys to add one more thing now that you've kind of heard yes. what it's like and now that you have a little bit more Great. inspiration. Um, Great. But <laughs> we're going to go back to Andy. Andy, would you like to add anything else to the valley? Yes. Since there were dinosaurs before, there's these big, huge, like, dinosaur bird creatures with teeth that are terrifying. That it's eat the monkeys head. and the frogs. Axe, yes. like, they are the carnivore of this. They are they don't very eat dangerous. The memus. They eat the memus. Eat no, the memus. I love the memus. You think those big memus no. could fight them? And though? they are, they are yeah. big. Yeah. Like we're talking small airplane big. Mm. Oh, it's like a like a? Do they fly? They are fly. they like a rock? They fly. Okay, yeah. You're just giving like a rock. Grant things to kill us with. Just As an I'm, I'm, I'm putting something in there to kill all the terrifying creations that we've made. That's cool. I would also like to add a, a creature. I don't know. It's not really a creature. It's more of a theme. So the storm that's continuously going around, there are there is something sinister in the storm as it passes through, and it's best to not be out and about while the storm passes there are some sort of perhaps they're undead perhaps they're more primordial but there is some sort of misty kind of like a um like a vampiric mist sort of creature feels very death stranding and i'm so here for it smoke i didn't play i didn't play it It also norman reedus is also there he also travels through On a motorcycle. <laughs> That's what I want to <laughs> add into this world Curious is just that Mads Mickelson is there in Canada. Mads Mickelson. Um, <laughs> listen, yes. we've got that the storm, it's not good to be caught out in this storm. Now, I would yeah. remind you, your um, player characters would not know some of these things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so because this has just started happening. This is brand new. We do know new. the rainbow gorillas, though. The Mimo. Oh, yeah. Cool with the Mimo. Right. I, Mimos have been around. I imagine. And the dinosaur birds are like, they seem that they have to be a constant, right? I I think that the uh, big dinosaur birds, you're not sure if they're going to be there again or not. I think it'd be like, a, hey, what do you think the rainbow girl is going to be like this year? And they'd be like, hey, you think those big bird <laughs> Oh, monsters? God, I hope um, those asshole me. birds are gone. <laughs> you know, the, exactly. meme, the Mimos? The Mimos? The Mimos? Oh. Are they, wait. The asshole birds have just gotten bigger every single I, changing. Do you want to point out, <laughs> like, they were little, and, and chat, every single changing, they get bigger. Danny and chat just said, I can't wait for the inevitable TPK by Norman Reedus. <laughs> It'll happen. It's going to be uh, Nemu Reedus, the Norman Reedus <laughs> Rainbow Gorilla. Nemu. Oh, no. Oh, it's going to be so That's cute. The leader Nemo. of the. Uh, is it Nemu with an N as in no, Nancy, it's... or is it Mimu? I think it's like Mimu as in Nemo. Nancy. <laughs> M is in Macy's. M is in Okay. Uh, Emily, what else would you like to add to this? Yeah, it's your turn. The trees are semi sentient. Jesus. Oh, no. The coming in. It's coming in. It's showing up. They're curious. So, like, the vines will reach out and, like, touch no. you, no. No, but not aggressively. Leanna, <laughs> run! Too soon! Too soon. <laughs> Listen, these oh, are jungle Toofy's jungles. revenge. Toofy's revenge. <laughs> <laughs> she is the trees. Oh my god! The Revenant could been a, a could have been a undead Mimo oh. for all we know. Oh That's true. <laughs> it kind of looks like a gorilla. So just, Every, mm. everything in my face hurts. 
<laughs> I will clarify. The trees are not sentient, but there are vines that grow throughout and on the trees, and they are a creature in and of themselves that are like very just curious about life. They'll just like reach out and kind of like boop you. The uncomfortable like they vines don't like is what you're saying. Yeah, oh god, exactly. we really hope the we really That's thought it. the uncomfortable vines wouldn't make it through this cycle, but is unfortunately, it, <laughs> is did. it like is it like tasteful boops or are they going for like oh, butt grabs no, and stuff? They're entirely un <laughs> like they don't understand. They're okay. it all comes back to like how juicy is every character. We need to know <laughs> the they socially really like awkward. This ones why we have to make juicy rest. checks. We do. You know how likely you are to assault from bush. <laughs> exactly. You know how babies just have to touch everything, and they like they huh? love putting their fingers in your mouth. Like yep. that's a thing for them. That's I the vines. The vines are babies. <laughs> Several. How many influence points do I have to use? <laughs> Every. To <get> <laughs> Strange. Never have a vine touch my mouth. Not touch me in a campaign. I love this. I love this. Adorable oh, baby vines. Renee's rethinking everything right now. I will spend an that. influence to I'm... make these isolated to certain areas and not just widespread throughout the valley. No, no I want them to be in the tent. Grove called the no I want them to be trying to get in the tent. The no go grove. No no grove. The no no grove, the no -no -grove is amazing. The no no grove that we do not go to. Because I will spend an all watch it except for one except for one weird guy in the tribe. He always goes there. <laughs> I I love love him. Him. Okay, order, 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 order in this fucking place. Um, there has been an influence spent to create a no-no grove. Emily, would you like to counter? I would. I want them to be not like, they are not the frogs. They are not widespread <laughs> rampant. They're okay. just kind of randomly throughout. You never know okay. when you're gonna get okay. good. But they're I'll not like... My, I'll retract my influence spend then if that's how it's gonna be. Okay. We don't need a no-no oh grove. Okay. Um, as I'm long going... as it's just not like every single time I'm walking through this No. Why has this episode been so saucy? <laughs> Listen, okay. I tried to make innocent baby curious vines and y'all yeah. nasties <laughs> and that's because in. you i'm sorry who asked the original question so the you audience did. doesn't you know did. this you had to clarify but early on this whole <laughs> thick <laughs> chat all right <laughs> dope it like like lit this candle by asking <laughs> how well endowed is your character and we've just been trashed that's from no. that point okay that's all right so order <laughs> So, um, I do, I really feel like we need to somebody put no-no grove in their pocket and maybe come back to that at some point, because that was funny. Um, Should I spend influence on the no-no grove? I can, if people are... Uh, another continent, uh, there's just a no-no grove. I think we've, I think we've, we've taken, no -no uh, we've taken Caitlin our... Woods is the no-no grove now. Oh, no! Hand off the piece. Emotional. damn it! So, um... I, I, I'm going to have to re-listen to who described their character as voluptuous now that we have a handsy vine also. I know there were a couple people this that time. Was, yeah. Um, I didn't put those two together, but here we are. <laughs> we have, I we don't have believe you. We have several characters this... that are self-described thicker than a snicker. True. Like, we've <laughs> got problems. No. I feel I like... I am all of them. I feel like Emily save... planned this really early <laughs> to on save, to save emily's reputation what? emily I, you do are talking about like it's the way that vines in real life if you put uh, your finger under a vine they'll start to curve most vines will yeah. start to curve around your finger you got a whole These bunch ones have yeah. a little yeah. bit more Perfect. situation going on personal <laughs> okay. yeah control yeah um no bonsai hentai the renee plant babies uh, the 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 mm -hmm. mural artist will decide how these are remembered. Um, <laughs> Renee, mm -hmm. what, would you like to add anything to the valley? I'm gonna keep going with creepy plant things okay. to carry over from last episode series. <laughs> uh, thank you, Emily. But I like the idea at some point in the the forest that surrounds that is is in the basin. Um, there is a grove where. And this is not something that I don't think any of the characters would know. It's just something that's going to be in the environment for maybe we discover, maybe we don't. Um, but at some point in the woods, there is a grove where there are 
mushrooms that grow mm-hmm. on uh, trees. And if you eat the mushrooms, they put you into an almost like dreamlike catatonic state. And the trees that they are attached to are actually symbiotic, um, predatory, uh, carnivorous entities that will like begin enveloping you into them. Because that's fun. We mm-hmm. eat the plants, the plants eat us. It's the circle of life. I like the idea of a um, symbiotic relationship between the trees and the mushrooms, too, because that is beneficial for mm-hmm. both parties. Mm-hmm. That is yeah. very much like a um, wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. For a throwback, mm-hmm. for a throwback monster. Mm-hmm. Look it up, chat. If you haven't seen a wolf in sheep's clothing D&D monster, it's fucking <laughs> terrifying and weird. <laughs> okay. I like that. Um, Mimics that look like hot women. <laughs> I am, <laughs> and they are symbiotic with the no no grows. And no-no they are grows. mushrooms, and <laughs> they no-no live no-no in the no no growth. Okay. Great. Um, I do. I oh like. I like. I like the idea of there being lots of different mushrooms in this valley. I think that's where my brain has been going. Um, Maggie, would you like to add anything to the Mad Hunter Valley? I would. So I'm going to come back a little bit to the little reverse oasises that we have mm-hmm. throughout where it's like the little sand areas. Um, not all of them, but some of them people have observed throughout the day seem to have a couple of birds just circling over them. And it's not necessarily a bird that anybody recognizes so it seems to be brand new to the area and they seem to be honing in specifically on just a couple of these reverse oasis sandy patches okay. i like that what do they look like yeah. i like the like i like the duality we've got going in all of these right <clears throat> like we've got the um we've got the storm and we've got the patches in the jungle, and we've got mm-hmm. the mushrooms in the trees, and I, I don't know. I like this is all this is good stuff. I like it. I think as far as the look, big, large, not maybe as big as the like dinosaur flying dinosaur creatures that we had. They definitely are just birds, but they look to be you know maybe vulture size, but not like a vulture. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Got it. And. Carlos, would you like to add anything to the Mad Hunter Valley? Oh man, we've added so many horrifying creatures. <laughs> I was gonna say we really have. I did come very close to adding like tremors, worms. No. And was what like, do you no, think the sandy stupid. patches are? No. Shut up. Um, I think that there is a like a flower. Let's say it looks very rosish. <clears throat> that is a deep purple. That grows in the valley sometimes, Ooh. allegedly. It's very rare. Uh, and if it, like, the, the gathering does find uh, whoever finds this beautiful deep rose, uh, deep purple rose, is like super special that year. I don't know. Mm, so it's like a persistent thing. It just kind of moves around, essentially. Yeah, point of yeah. inevitability. Very rare per cycle. I like hmm. that. Uh, I like that a lot. It's like the, uh, it's like the, um, I haven't actually seen Harry Potter, but like they play the game and isn't it like extra Gold points? Stitch? Yeah. Isn't it like extra points if you catch that thing? Mm-hmm. You win, don't you? Yeah. You just you win. It. Oh, okay. That's a little OP. That's how the game, well, you don't necessarily win. Um, yeah. Actually guys, you don't necessarily oh. win. The game oh. just ends and it's worth points, oh but there God. have been teams who have lost, oh. even though they caught this. <laughs> um, <laughs> can uh thank you okay that's good to know um i think it's like that it's i think not. it's worth points um it's not worth points okay and then last but not least i'm going to let you collaborate on this because i'm so nice uh oh what mm. is this year's changings goal so is it to map out the valley is it to find you know sp- six edible food sources is it to uh, identify all of the uh, carnivorous creatures is it to uh, maybe it's something specific like to determine what is in the center of the storm perhaps it is to uh, I 
find a way to capture one of these birds that is flying around with the sandy patches and you know bring them in for study there is a goal of the changing now remember it's not the changing isn't so much about survival anymore that's what it that's how it began and now it's more of a um it's a endeavor a what do you, what would you call it? a scientific endeavor it's mm -hmm. to study so what would you guys like the goal of the grand clan tournament of the mad hunter valley to be this year i i do kind of initially i was like to map out the valley because that makes the most sense but i do like the idea of figuring out what the fuck is at the center of these storms it seems like the biggest like like first thing noticeable difference everybody would be like ooh what is this you know what i mean especially yeah. because of how it's got this weird pattern um yeah i don't i don't hate that i'm intrigued by the storm too because it seems to have areas it doesn't affect mm -hmm. exactly i kind of i i do really like that as well i also though i like the idea of not having a singular goal which mm -hmm. is like learn this and instead to be like you're accruing multiple things. Yeah, it's like so, a it's like a scavenger hunt almost. I mean, I yeah. think that's yeah. what cool I thought. Of like yeah. two two new flora, two new fauna. Like mm -hmm. have a list. Mm -hmm. Like okay. two new edible foods and like two new predators or two new areas you yeah. have to yeah. watch out for. Could I suggest right. could I suggest like could I what if it was like a timed event that was like in X number of days you have to catalog as many things, as many plants, fungi, predators, like new changes as possible. Or maybe things that have remained too. Cause I think there's yeah. something to be say if we see, you know, again, we've got our, our Mimus, like mm. they've held over, but maybe if some of their characteristics, the maybe again, are just bigger, free points at this time. or <laughs> everybody just wakes up and writes. They're the bingo. Oh my card. God. Is it bingo? <laughs> oh my, so if I'm correct, we're basically playing Pokemon snap. A little Cor bit. Yeah. Pokemon snap. Maybe. Let's go. Maybe. Go. Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Except is Pokemon bit. Go because we're actually walking around, <laughs> yeah, and being mm -hmm. active and physical yeah. and running yeah. around and exploring new things with our friends. I like, I like that I idea. Like I like having, and it, mm -hmm. there, there has to be. I like as part of it. There is a, not, like, not like a defined. There's, there's a an aspect of the more info you're able to kind of catalog, the more valuable that point is, or at least the mm -hmm. very least, it can't just be like. I saw a weird rainbow monkey. It's like, here's the rainbow oh. monkey, the Mimus. They eat this. They Wait. tend to hang out here. It's almost, yeah. have you played Subnautica? Yes. Love it's it. almost like when you like scan different animals in Subnautica, like the more that you scan them, like the more information you get on them. Mm. Oxygen. Yeah. Oxygen. I, th Oxygen. I think so there might also I'm be gonna die! <laughs> points tied to like how vital that information is for survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, like yeah. the more dangerous the thing is, whether it be like a poisonous food or a like, there's slightly more weighted of instead of somebody just going out and being like, I found this flower and I found this flower and I found this flower yeah. and I found this, like mm -hmm. just cataloging quantity. Like I think quality is a big part of it. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found this new yeah. mushroom, but also you will die if you eat this. Like yeah. we're not going to tell you how we found that out. But I really like this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, is there like a is... judges panel? <clears throat> I do think if there's going to be different to weighted, be. if there's different weighting, yeah. then there is going to have to be a uh, panel, I imagine, of uh, elders. So like Mama yeah. Mama Madisher would be on the panel where they um, do a blind judging of everyone's final catalog. Yeah. Hey. I like that a lot. I do I like that. as well because that ties into the you have this amount of time, but you're not just like rushing in, being like flower, 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 got it, let's go. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You right. have to balance the how much time we spend and yeah. how much research we can gather. Mm -hmm. Is it like since it's different clans, do each clan like do we all have like a set area that's been like no. predetermined section? Now it's just a free for all. Yeah. Everybody. Some yeah. of them. Some it. of them probably play a little dirty too. Honestly. I was going to say, are there rules they against combat 
in uh, there, this there are very adventure. clear rules that you may not attack or touch the property of or cast any spells that would affect anyone from another clan this is a scholastic event guys have some honor like this is not a combat thing oh i've participated in an odyssey of the mind it got physical but you're saying that you're saying that asshole tribe might come up and be like Whoa, you guys got to try those mushrooms over on those trees yes. over there. Yeah. Wow, delicious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like spells like Gift of Gab, Worth right? Where they points. can make it seem like they didn't just cast a spell or, you know, mm -hmm. th the earth suddenly gets molded around you and you're like, what the fuck? And someone's just standing over there, like, you know, touching their fingertips. Like, I didn't cast a spell. Um, <laughs> it must just be the changing. The changing is it's crazy. A ch it's still changing. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it, it'd be more <clears throat> underhanded stuff like that. Of course, uh, Mama Medisher would say that's not how you play this game, mm -hmm. right? This is mm -hmm. yeah. Fine, Mama raised Mom. us better than that. Mm. There's a reason you lose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am. Hey, well, I just so tried some mushrooms over you. on that tree. Do you want one? On who does the Henry so... Cavill like arm locking? Thing. <laughs> I am so excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, viewers, those who have stuck with us through a very chunky weaving session, yeah. uh, it's a lot of thick Sauce. with thick. thick. It's going to be a ton of fun. So <laughs> join us next week for the uh, entrance into the valley, and join us for the Grand Clan Tournament of the Man Hunter Valley. Uh, yeah. Like subscribe that's gonna be it for today please we are sending a memu to everyone who subscribes to our channel uh, it is both a promise and a threat <laughs> um may vines only boop you in appropriate places for the rest of your days thank you everyone so much for hanging out with us we'll see you next week Bye. 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific for the next episode of the Grand Clan Tournament of the Matt Hunter Valley. Goodbye, yeah. everybody. Bye. Yay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.